the New York Yankees taking on the Chicago White Sox. And a good afternoon. Welcome to Yankee Stadium and New York Yankee Baseball for 1985. I'm Spencer Ross, along with Phil Rizzuto and Bill White. We're getting ready for another opener here in the house that Ruth built. 1923, 62 years ago. And the house that's been renovated some by George Steinbrenner. The house that Ruth built, the house that George renovated. But it's still the same game, the same game indeed. Baseball is indeed a unique game. And there are many reasons. One being, well, I, I kind of think it, it kind of smells the best. There's that bright green grass, and that signals, of course, the beginning of spring. And the scent intermingled with the smell of uh, the hot dogs mixed with the mustard, the freshly roasted peanuts, even the stale beer that falls on the floor. It all blends together to make this indeed a very unique game. Spring is here, and so is baseball. And a big crowd on hand here at Yankee Stadium. Mickey Mantle will be here to throw out the first ball. Robert Merrill will be along to sing the national anthem that he has done so many, many times here at Yankee Stadium. And the weatherman could not have complied any better. After yesterday's rain, the sun is shining brightly. Let's get ready for baseball 1985. And right now, let's head upstairs to my college. Phil Rizzuto and Bill White. Hey, thank you, Spencer. Bill White along with Phil Rizzuto. And Phil, uh, how many opening days is this for you? You know, I stopped counting, Bill, but I started in 41, and this is uh, 1945. Quite a few. And, yes, quite a few. <laughs> and, of course, this one uh, with, with your old buddies, uh, Mickey Mantle here, along with Roger Maris, who's oh, up in uh, the Oh, beautiful. Couldn't have picked a better time. But I, one of our other buddies is down on the field right now. And the game wouldn't be uh, complete without him. I, that's me, a catch down there, I believe. The home of champions. But the one I'm talking about is Robert Merrill. And I welcome all of you to the heart of the Bronx, the Yankee Stadium. I'll see you in July. I'll see you in June. I'll see you in August. And I'll see you in October at the World Series. Good luck. And here's Mayor Koch. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ed Koch. Hey. Hey. I am here to make only two statements. One is to say there must be a subway series. Well, another great job by Bob Merrill, and we have quite a festive crowd on hand here this afternoon, the Scooter, for the opening day of this 1985 World Series at Yankee Stadium. I, they really are excited, and I think a lot of it has to do not only with the opening, but with the fact that Mickey Mantle is going to throw out the first ball. We heard tremendous ovations for Mattingly and for Winfield and Piogi, but wait till they announce Mantle and Maris. You know, two guys, Bill, that set fantastic records. Maris did something nobody else could do. 61 homers in 1961. Mantle, the greatest switch hitter of all time. Oh, well, Mantle was right behind Maris in 1961. Yeah, oh, they battled also. right they down to the last right. week. Sort of do like the uh, battle last year between uh, Don Mattingly and Dave Winfield. Right. That'll almost be a full house here. The last home uh, opener for the Yankees was against the same Chicago White Sox back in 1982. They had been scheduled to uh, start against the Texas Rangers, but that series was snowed out, as you remember. I remember that very well. And then also the first two games uh, when the White Sox came in on April 6th and the 8th, those were also snowed out. And they finally got to play a doubleheader here on Easter Sunday, and the White Sox won both those games by a score of 7 to 6 and 12 and 2 nothing uh, in a regular in the uh, second ball game. So we look at Lou Pinella as he's uh, checking out some of the dignitaries here. We'll probably, I guess Mickey will probably come through the dugout and throw the ball out the, from the uh, box seats next to the Yankee dugout. I bet you Mickey doesn't reach home plate if he stands on the pitcher's mound. Well, he's not, he'll probably, you think he'll go to the mound? We'll see if Mickey goes to the mound or he goes to the uh, box seat. Let's look at a film of the uh, great ball player, Mickey Mantle. Swinging that dangerous bat of his around, batting left-handed against right-handed pitching. Fisher all set to go, goes into the wind-up round, comes the right arm. In comes the pitch, Mantle swings. There goes a long drive going to deep right field. It's soaring up high. It's going. It's going.
listen to this crowd. They're all on their feet, and they had just shown that dramatic home run, the closest ball ever to come. They're going out of Yankee Stadium. I tell you, Mickey can't believe it. You know, he really felt badly, Bill, about being barred from baseball and doing something like this. Tom, I'm going to bet. Mickey's looking at the last parachute is coming in from the Army Golden Knights. In fact, two of them. Yeah, look at this. Well, they've added uh, something new to their stunt. Now, I'm going to bet you that Mickey does reach home plate. All right. You got a little wager going. Well, they're still clapping for Mickey Mantle here as we wait for the Yankees to take the field. I tell you, he's still a kid at heart, Mickey Mantle. I never forget the first year he came to the Yankees from Commerce, Oklahoma, his home, and he still seems awed by everything. He Roger Maris is here. Looks like Roger's going to throw. Oh, he's going to hand it to Mickey. And then Mickey will throw the ball in. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have missed him. Yeah. All right, let's see. He'll make it. Again. Again. <laughs> Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. Number seven, of course, Mantle. Roger with that crew cut. And Roger where? Number nine? Number nine. And number seven. I tell you, Roger, for many, many years, would not come back to Yankee Stadium and was so surprised the first time he came back with the Welcome home, he got, but we'll be back with more about Mickey and Roger right after this. Waiting advertisers in New York Yankee baseball are Toyota, who reminds you to buckle up and use child safety seats. It's a good feeling. Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. Citibank, when you bank at Citibank, it's your city. Your tri-state Dodge dealers who invite you to test drive Fortran in Motion, the 1985 Dodge Lancer, and, of course, by the New York Yankees. Now back here at Yankee State. Whoa! Look at that. They're back again. Oh, and say that, Cora. I got to get her her own show now. And the Yankees take the field. And let's look at the White Sox lineup. They'll lead off with Ozzie Guillen, the shortstop, batting second, the left fielder, Rudy Law. Hal Baines in right field will hit third. The first baseman, Greg Rocker, will bat fourth. Carlton Fisk will catch. He'll hit fifth. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, Ron Kittle. In the seventh slot, the center fielder, youngster Darrell Boston. The third baseman, Luis Salazar, will bat eighth. The second baseman, Julio Cruz, will bat ninth. And on the mound for the Chicago White Sox, left-hander Tim Lawler, a former Yankee. Now let's look at the Yankee lineup. At second base, we'll have Willie Randolph making his 10th straight uh, opening day lineup. The, second, the shortstop is uh, Bobby Meacham. The first baseman is Don Mattingly, batting fourth and playing right field, Dave Winfield. The designated hitter, Don Baylor, will hit fifth. Ken Griffey will play left field. He'll bat sixth. Batting seventh, third base, Dale Barra, Yogi's son. The uh, center, the catcher, Butch Weininger, will hit eighth. And then the center fielder, Henry Cotto, will bat ninth. And on the mound for the Yankees, making his second start, is right-hander Ed Whitson. Looking at the Yankees defensively, Mattingly at first, Randolph at second, Meacham the shortstop, Barra over at third. Griffey in left, Cotto in center, and Dave Winfield out in right. Butch Weininger behind the plate, and Ed Whitson uh, trying to even his record up at a win and a loss is on the mound. Both Whitson and Lawler pitched for the San Diego Padres last year. See his ERA, Whitson's 0-1. He got roughed up in Boston in a game against the Boston Red Sox. Let's look at the umpires. Larry McCoy is behind the plate. Steve Palermo at first, Dave Phillips at second, and Jerry Newdecker over at third. 
Well, the ball game is just about ready to start. In fact, it is ready to start. And here's the scooter, Phil Rizzuto. All right, Bill White. And slice foul by Ozzie Guillen, the uh, young shortstop. You got to remember that uh, Phil Negro had a terrible opening day in Boston, as did Whitson. But then Negro came back in Cleveland, pitched a sparkling game. And let's see if Whitson can do it. That's a nope, a little inside, one on one. Lou Pinella moving the defense around. He's trying to move Winfield, but Winfield's doing some sit-ups out there. That's fouled out of play. One ball, two strikes. Not only did uh, Whitson pitch for San Diego last year, but Guillen was one of their farm uh, hands. He went to the Chicago White Sox in the Lamar Hoyt trade. All right. So some pretty shrewd trading going on. Absolutely beautiful day. Uh, a little scary early in the morning. Ground ball, Willie Randolph booted it. Holy cow, you don't see that very often. And uh, Willie is charged with an error. Hey, it looked like he was going to feel that so easily, Bill. He moved to it cleanly, got in front of it. Somehow the ball kicked up and Randolph uh, could not handle it. So Guion's on on an error charge to Willie Randolph. And the amazing... Oh. Here's Randolph. He's in front of the ball. Hit him on the heel of the glove. Yep. Hit him on the heel of the glove and bounced off. And the infield was so smooth right there that didn't take a bad hop. Well, that means that it might have taken a bad hop, though, Scooter, if it hit him on the heel. All right, there's a beautiful bunt. They'll have to go to first and hurry. And they just get him. Oh, man, that law can fly. One to three. Oh, the White Sox are Rudy LaRusso. Playing for that one run early in the ball game, Bill. Yes, they are. Of course, they think that their pitching will carry them. I think the Sox are going to use the old-time Sox theory. Speed, defense, good pitching. That can do it. A lot of clubs have won pennants that way. Of course, a lot more won them the other way with power. And a lot of Yankee pitch. teams have won with power, yeah. yeah. Well, here he is, Harold Baines. And, man, did he ruin the Yankees last year. See his average right now, 286. Has one double, one RBI. But he's starting to sting the ball lately. Foul down the left side, not a play, strike one. That's what makes Bain so tough. If you pitch him away, he can hit the ball. He likes the ball away. You pitch him away, he'll go away. As we look at Guillen, go back to second base. If you pitch him inside, he's a lot like Mattingly. He'll pull a ball. He had a couple of days against the Yankees. Everything he hit was either a home run or an extra base hit. Normally he's a slow starter, but he's batting 286 so far this uh, early season. All right, one man out. A little high. One and one. Whitson, unfortunately, uh, pulled a muscle when he was taking his uh, baseball socks off in the workout up in Boston. Ooh, Guillen getting a big lead out there. High two and one. Nice colors the White Sox have. The shoes match the socks and a the sweatshirt. There's the temperature today. 68, 76 degrees humidity, not bad. Base hit ripped to left field. He'll score. And the White Sox lead it one to nothing. And Bill told you that's where Beans likes that pitch away, and he went right with it, Bill. You know, in this park, Scooter, you, you don't know whether to stay out there and give him the single or come inside and perhaps give up the home run. But uh, sometimes I think you you got to make Beans uh, be aware you might pitch him inside. Here he slashes that ball past Barra. And out on the left field, no way Griffey can throw out the speedy Ozzie again. All right, the batter now, Greg Walker, and he's got excellent power. White Sox lead at one nothing. Popped him up, and that's going to be a toughie. A long run for both Griffey, and nobody can get it. Fair ball, but good backing up by Meacham. Baines had a hold up and can only stop at second. Boy, that was trouble from the second it was hit, Bill. Well, they had to play Walker to pull. That's the kid who hit the monster's home run off of Whitson down right. spring training. Normally pulls everything. Griffey playing him well over in left center field. Had a long way to go. 
And the Yankees are fortunate that uh, Baines didn't score and Walker end up at second base. Here's uh, Meacham going out. Griffey coming on. He dives. Can't make the play. He tripped just slightly before he dove for that ball. I don't know whether he'd have got it. So Baines at second and Walker at first. And Carlton Fisk the batter. And Fisk has been red hot. Of course, he was hitting in his favorite ballpark up in Fenway. Went four for eight with two doubles, a homer, and five runs batted in. Played One man most out. of uh, last year's scooter with uh, pulled stomach muscles. Yeah. Worked out over the winter. That'll be out of play down the left field line. Just back about two rows. Boy, they're going to wear Griffey out early in the ball game here. Bobby Meacham, too. A lot of room to cover, even though they have moved the fences in in left field and left center. It's still a lot of room out there. Still one out. Strike call. Good pitch on the outside corner. The team's record, Yankees have won two, lost three so far this year, and the White Sox have won three and lost two. The White Sox just coming off uh, two wins up in Boston. They beat the uh, Red Sox two out of three. Oh, oh, man. That's something an experienced pitcher should never do, Bill. Yeah, that's true. Whitson turned the ball loose while the shortstop, Meacham, was out behind Baines at second base. He should have stepped off. That's right, exactly. the fence has moved in in left field it's now 379 and left center 411 and that used to really be Death Valley they're still longer than most parks it's forced 10 straight away center that used to be 417 yep just got a piece of it to stay alive so Carlton Fisk for a pitch away Bill I believe well he is through this fastball by might not have been in the strike zone it's up a little bit and Fisk swung under it all right big strikeout for Whitson and now Ron Kittle what a rookie year he had batting 133 right now no homers one RBI The uh, lines now 312 and left, 411 and left center, 410, 385, and 310. Seating capacity, natural grass. Check swing foul. Kittle having a tough time getting started. He's two for 15. Power hitter. You got to pitch him inside. Yeah, he likes that ball away. on the screen and a good pitch to hit just got under it and the first bow of the year for the uh, <laughs> luxury box suites they missed it with the net one nothing the White Sox lead top of the first a little high two and two Runners at first and second. Walker at first. Baines at second. As Bill said, that was a big break that Baines uh, didn't continue. Popped it up. And Mattingly, with plenty of room, makes the catch. And I think the Yankees were fortunate to get out of that. One run. 
two hits, one error, two men left, middle of the first, White Sox one, Yankees coming to bat. Defensively, they have a big Greg Walker at first base. Julio Cruz is the second baseman. Ozzy Guillen, the shortstop. Luis Salazar is at third base. In left field is really Rudy Law. He played center field last year. The youngster Daryl Boston's in center field. Hal Baines in right. Carlton Fisk behind the plate. And on the mound, Tim Lawler. No, he is not related to the former White Sox catcher Sherm Lawler. This fellow started uh, in the Yankee farm system, pitched at West Haven and Columbus, and also uh, was 1-0 and with the Yankees in 1980 as he won his only start in 1980. So Tim Lawler for the Chicago White Sox. He'll be pitching to Willie Randolph, Bobby Meacham, and then Don Mattingly. Scooter? All right, Willie Randolph stepping in, and Willie probably will be leading off until Ricky Henderson gets back. And we don't have an exact date. I know he's going to play a couple of games down for Bucky Dent's Fort Lauderdale Yankees. Work himself into shape. But Willie batting 222, 4 for 18. Alala's got good stuff. He tends to be a little wild. Ball one. He really was wild in the one uh, playoff game he pitched, Bill. Last year yeah. for, the San, for the San Diego against the Chicago Cubs. Right. A little looper, and that could be trouble. And Cruz stayed with it. Makes a beautiful catch. He had turned the wrong way first, but he's so quick. Julio Cruz, an exciting ball player. Here it is again. Ball slices off Randolph's bat. The wind uh, might be giving Cruz a bit of trouble. He has to die for the ball, but he made the catch. All right, Bobby Meacham, the batter. Bobby batting at 500. Eight for 16, one double, four runs batted in. He did sting the ball in Cleveland. Strike one. Talking about Lawler last year in that... Uh, National League Championship Series. He walked four in four and a third innings. Yeah, that was rough. That's what got him out of the ball game. A little low, one and one. That's a National League strike. I think a lot of the pitchers coming over from the National League have to adjust uh, to the American League strike zone, even though the American League umpires are still have started to wear most of them that uh, inside chest protector. You're right. They don't get the low strike. Change hits the corner. One ball, two strikes. See, is Jerry Newdecker the only American League umpire still wearing that old balloon? I believe he is. I believe he is. Inside. Just to remind the fans that uh, Thursday's game will begin at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That's the Yankees and the same White Sox. And the series finale Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. Bounce that one up. It's three and two. What time are you going to be here, two? No, no, no. <laughs> That's a tough one. You know, you're so used to it. It's just habit. You figure it's a two o'clock game. Yeah. And... by Meacham, who was behind on the count. If he swings at that, he'd... <laughs> <laughs> he'd have been in trouble. Well, he wouldn't have, certainly would have needed a sandwich. <laughs> by Don Mattingly. Thank a lot of the big crowd here. On a beautiful day for opening day. You know, it was unbelievable, Bill. Mattingly hit into three double plays in Cleveland in that final game. Well, he's stinging the ball, man. They'll yep. fall in for you. Good oh, hitters yeah. are going to get their base hits. He's 5 for 21, hitting 238, with two doubles, a triple, and two runs batted in. Yanks trail 1 0. Bottom of the first. That was an easy toss, not as good move. Walker holding the bag against Meacham.
strike one. Waller's a big fella. He's 6'3, goes 195. Slow one on one. Gene Michael flashing the signs at third. Oh, we'll keep an eye on Bobby Meacham. See if that was a fake or he might have him running. It was a fake. That's blown away. Chumon. Looks like Waller's quite worried about Meacham over first base. He is, and uh, Stick will give some more signs now. Oop. Eating those sunflower seeds, that might be it. Nope, he didn't go, and that's outside. Three and one. I think, Bill, if the Yankees can be a little more patient with Lawler, they're going to have a lot of runners during the course of this game. Well, he's pitched four innings previously, Scooter, and he's walked four, struck out three, 0 oh and 1, lost that game to the uh, Red Sox. Uh, Seems to be quite worried about Beecher. He really is. I'd be worried about the guy who hit 345 <laughs> last year. <laughs> That uh, was, that's the same pitch that Fist struck out on, up and in. Hit the mask of the plate umpire. Larry McCoy, so it's three and two, and you'd have to figure that Meacham's going to be running on this pitch. And Lalo will probably make one throw over there, maybe two. Unless he quick pitches. Full count. There he goes, that's one. Have a better move than that. He really should. That's his best move now. Meacham not getting too big a lead. So we said that in Cleveland about Heat, and he promptly picked Winfield <laughs> off. There goes Meacham, and it hit his bat. Foul ball, foul ball, he said. Oh, what a break for Mattingly. That would have been ball four, but trying to check his swing, the ball tipped the bat. So one thing about Lawler's move is we watch him. Well, here, well, this ball might have been on the inside corner. Matter he might have been lucky yeah. to call it back. But if we'll watch Lawler on his stretch position, he'll have his front leg, the right leg, a little bit more toward third base. Now, I would think it'd be tough to have a good move. It first would. Base. You got to bring that right leg way over. Maybe as he goes up, he'll, uh, he'll move it a bit. Let's see. I don't think so. He, no. he keeps it right there. That's a long way to move that leg to yeah. make move to first base. He's got to do all of that there. And Meacham almost left too soon. He started towards second and was able to dive back. And as we told you, he's not taking a big lead. Here's yeah. that move. Oh, he's got to take that leg all the way yeah. over there now. That's a long way. Again. Not going to fool too many base runners. <laughs> White Sox one, Yankees nothing. Bottom of the first, one out. John Mattingly, batter. Popped him up, and Meacham will have to go back. Salazar at third base makes the catch. Two away. And Meacham back to first. Talking with Stump Merrill, the Yankees first base coach. And now Dave Winfield. Big Dave hitting 353. Six to 17. A triple, a homer, and three runs batted in. So talking about the fences, Scooter, last year it was the same down to the left field foul pole, 312 feet. In left field, uh, it was 387. That's moved in to 379. Left center was 430. Wow. That's 411 this year. And straightaway center, we mentioned 417 this year. It's 410. All right. So that's
that would have been the difference of quite a few home runs that the Yankees missed out on. And the Yankee pitchers also did not give up. Yes. All right. Two away. Okay, they want to pitch Winfield way in. And he goes away. He goes high and away. I don't think Lala is that sharp with his control, but he's got a sneaky fastball. No strikes on Big Dave with two out. Yeah, what a jump he had. Never get him. Holy cow, Meacham got some jump. A stolen base for Bobby Meacham. So I guess he was studying him all that time, Bill, because he really got a run and jump. Well, it's a little tough for Lawler to get that ball to first base to pick you off. So he just said, hey, you can't pick me off. I'll get a bigger jump and I'll go. Pitch is high. But as Phil mentioned, Meacham got such a big jump, there was no chance at all for Fisk uh, to throw him out. And that's Meacham's first uh, stolen base this year. And the Yankees' third of the year. Fisk did a good job getting rid of that ball and getting it down there, but with the jump, he stole that on the pitcher. So now Winfield with a chance to uh, even up this ball game. Yankees trail one to nothing. Meacham at second. Strike one. Ball had to just nip the outside corner. Took a little off that pitch. Outside, three and one. I think a lot of pitches early in the season, although I'm sure Lawler doesn't know it, they've probably told him. They run the pitch to Don Baylor. Because it takes Baylor a good while to get loose and a good while into the season to get on his uh, hitting streak. Right. Ball four. So Winfield is on. Given up by Lawler. Winfield at first, Meacham at second, and Don Baylor the batter. Baylor batting just 167. He's three for 18, two doubles, two runs batted in. Well, when he goes on a hot tear, he gets loose. He can really carry a ball. Club. Oh, yeah. And he was a little unhappy with what he had read in the paper today about that in a moment. Just didn't get around on that fastball. Anyway, uh, George Steinbrenner said he's looking for a left-handed designated hitter to spell half the time with Baylor. And Baylor said, look, they've been trying to get rid of me for years and nobody's come along to uh, do the job. Well, said. last year he drove in 89 runs. Yeah. One strike on Don. To check his swing, hit the bat. That's Nothing pitch that gives you. Baylor some trouble now. The good hard mustard, but as the, as the season goes on, he starts turning on that ball. And he has trouble early. A lot of players had trouble early in the season, especially muscular players, it seems. I don't know if it's the weather that's uh, so cool. I think it just so. takes a while to get, get in the groove. But uh, once he gets in the groove, and that's what they call him, groove. Yeah. <laughs> he could drive in some runs for you. All right, on two. With two men out and two men on. Oh, yes. Baylor looking for a breaking pitch, and he got a fastball on the corner. No runs, no hits, no errors. Two men left. At the end of one, it's the White Sox one, and the Yankees nothing. One of the most popular of all Yankee giveaways this Saturday and Sunday, April 20th and 21st, Ivory Soap Yankee Calendar Weekend. All fans coming to see the Yankees take on the Indians Saturday and Sunday. Take home a free 1985 Yankee calendar 
compliments of ivory soap. And now uh, Darrell Boston will be leading off, batting 467. No homers, three RBIs. He's been up 15 times with seven base hits. Four of them for extra bases. Strike one by Ed Whitson. One to nothing. The White Sox are leading in the top of the second. A change or a split fingered fastball. A little high and away. One and one. and showing a good fastball today. Well, you get a reputation. Everybody's looking for that uh, palm ball yeah. and that changeup. By the way, the run was unearned in the first inning because of the error by Willie. Bouncer up the middle. They'll never get him. They'll stop the ball. Good play by Meacham, but it was hit so slowly that Boston beat it out. again ball is out over the plate they jammed him a little bit though and Whitson uh, was just a bit too far toward third base Meacham the only one who could make the play he's moving toward first but Boston legs it out all right now uh, as we look at it again Willie was ready to field it but Meacham had the better angle on it he's got to cheat a little bit on a play like got that. A first baseman has to come off yeah, Before a little quick. he catches the ball and hope uh, that the umpire doesn't see it. You're right there. That might have done the trick. Here's Salazar. Let's see if the White Sox continue their sacrificing as they did in the first inning after Ozzie Guillen got on on the error. Rudy Law up next sacrificed. So Salazar is the batter. Batting 143, 2 for 14, no extra base hits, two RBIs. Boston has great speed. Uh, uh -huh. Scooter, excellent speed. Ball one, he did not square to bunt on that one. See Boston looking for the uh, signs. He played 35 games for the White Sox last year, stole six bases and wasn't caught. Wow. would have been two but Willie didn't get him Man, I'm telling you they got some speed on this club white well I think that surprised Willie Randolph that speed Willie thought he had him out but obviously uh, Salazar beat it out and that'll be another base hit. here's the ball again to Whitson's left now he you see he falls off on the third base side of the mound might have been a double play, but he knocked the ball over toward Randolph, and uh, Salazar beat the throw there. So, first and second, nobody out. And Julio Cruz, and you can bet the ranch that he's going to bunt right here. Nobody out. And he missed the bunt. They got him hung up. Get rid of it quick. boy, Good play. <laughs> was on the bag and put oh they played that beautifully white good heads up play by Weininger coming up throwing now Crows will bunt through the ball here Weininger comes up he sees that the uh, youngster Boston is too far off they've got him trapped Meacham to Barra he'll make one fake there and then tag him now they try to get uh, who is that going into second base that's Salazar Salazar and they couldn't get him but they did get to put out a two six five put out right and Meacham put his glove out and Willie lost the ball or they might have had a chance for the double play Tony, La Tony La Russa, a little upset all right so there's and that time Whitson stepped off the mound so there's one out and a runner at second they played that run down very well one on one oh Julio that's one of the toughest plays, Bill, when you're on second. You know you got to get a pretty good break. When a guy squares the bunt and bunts right through it, 
you still take a couple of steps. Yeah, and it's even tougher when you're a youngster. Yeah, you right. You really don't want to get forced at third base. Right. And you cheat a little bit. Veterans might hang around a little bit longer, around second. Foul back out of play. Just over talking to Arlene Howard, the late uh, Elson Howard's wife. Uh huh. Remember the 64 series when he picked me off second? Oh, yes. I did that series. I'll never forget it. I'll never let you forget it. Yeah, but I made it to third. Season. I know you did, and we <laughs> lost the series. I'll That's never the only forget thing I that. did. <laughs> Look out. Holy cow, high and tight. again ball is up and in uh, and Cruz late getting out of the way that's what scares me guys just don't expect that ball is no. anymore no way another one up and in three balls two strikes one out the White Sox lead one nothing top of the second Back to the screen. White Sox have four hits. Yankees will be looking for their first hit. There's some scores, William. Cleveland over Baltimore, 2 nothing in the fourth inning of that game. No score. Boston, uh, Texas, and Toronto early. Grounded to Willie Randolph. And Willie throws him out. Salazar moves over to third, but there are two men out. Willie played that quite safe. He didn't charge that ball. I think the next one, Willie will charge. He, he backed so. up and let that ball there play. Well, you know, after you make one error, you do get a little, uh, and then that play where uh, Salazar beat out that ground ball, you get a little leery. And you can be sure he'll charge the next one. The batter now, Ozzie Gian, who reached on an error by Willie and scored the only run of the game, has one a short, and Meacham... Throws them out. So they get out of the jam. No runs, two hits, no errors. A man left at the end of an inning and a half. The White Sox won the Yankees nothing, and we are now going to pause for station identification. Well, back here at Yankee Save, the White Sox lead one to nothing after one and a half. The Yankees will send up Ken Griffey, Dale Barra. And uh, then Butch Weiniger against left-hander Tim Lawler. And once again, we salute the Scooter. And <laughs> no, Cora. not me. That's the Cora Rizzuto fan club. All right, Ken Griffey the better. Griffey hitting 353. Six for 17, a triple and two RBIs. Check swing foul. Yankees are doing a lot of that. Most of them been on pitches up and in. They couldn't get the bat out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be a signal man in the Navy, but I'm having a bad job signaling those I thought kids. you were gunnery. Well, yeah, but Bob, you got to be both. There's a base hit, ripped to left center. And Griffey makes the turn and holds on. Looked like a high slider, Bill, and he really butcher boyed it. Well, that's his seventh hit in 18 times at bat. He's having a good early season, Ken Griffey. We mentioned in, in the spring that he was really running better. And when your knees don't hurt, you really feel a lot better. Here it is again. He's able to pivot, waits on the ball, and just slashes it over the shortstop's head. Griffey at first and the batter now Dale Barra and Dale off to a good start. Ball one. Now Barra must have faced uh, Lawler. In the other league certainly. Yep. Dale playing last year with the Pirates. Lawler with San Diego. Oh, Dale batting 333. Looking for his first run batted in. He hits it well but Baines can fly. I mean, Darrell Boston can fly and makes the catch out there in right center field. 
I think Griffey wanted to tag and yeah. try to get in the second. That's that's so, uh, not a too far distance for the center field to get the ball in no, the second from no. the, from there where he is. I think Griffey is feeling a little frisky. Yeah. Here early in the hit. Yeah, he's feeling like he felt a few years back when he had those great wheels with the Cincinnati yep. Reds. All right, Butch Weiniger will be the batter with Griffey at first, one man out. They got a lot of speed and some good arms in that outfield, White. Yep. Law, Boston, and Baines. There's that funny all, move to first. All of them throw left-handed. Yep. That's unusual. You're right. All right, Griffey leading away. time a Yankee hits a home run. Hey, Butch Weiniger, this bud's for you. That's Weiniger's first home run this year. And only the second for the Yankees. Dave Winfield has the other one. And despite the fact that the offenses have been moved in here, this ball would have gone out anyway. It's yep. into the seats. So Butch Weiniger gives the Yankees a one-run lead. All right, and Henry Cotto. Good-looking young ball player, Henry Cotto. Takes the ball down low. Cotto hitting 500, two for four with a double. Hard bouncer, but nice play by Salazar, and he throws him out. He was playing Cotto in, but he was able to dive as the ball came up, took a high bounce, Bill. Salazar was also uh, picked up from San Diego by the Chicago White Sox. good deal for the White Sox. It really was. Here it is again. Starting pitcher, left side of the infield. Yeah. Here's Salazar diving for the ball. Takes his time. Makes a good throw on the first base. All right, Willie Randolph popped a second his first time up. Ball one. I understand that Hoyt's lost a little bit of weight over there with San Diego. Mm. And... Uh, he could afford to lose a little bit, but a lot of times losing that weight, I think, takes some of the um, stamina out of ball players. If you're not overweight in the first place. Yeah. Strike one on one. Nice change by Alala that time. I think uh, supposedly Lamar Hoyt got up into the 260s. No, he was roly poly. There's a base hit. High fastball that Willie really butcher boy. Oh, the Yankee bats coming alive here in the bottom of the second inning. Base hit number three off Lawler and Fisk goes out to have a chat. Alden Fisk knows how to slow a ball game down. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Carlton Fisk knows what to tell pitchers to yeah. get back in the groove. <laughs> He's a good catcher, no doubt about it. But Bobby Meacham has not been up officially. He walked his first time up. And they and call the ball. Holy cow, I hope we get a replay of that one. He might have just moved his shoulder a bit toward uh, home plate. And a balk was called immediately by first base umpire Steve Palermo and also the second base umpire Dave Phillips. So both of them saw it. All right. Here, Here let's watch look it. at it. Yeah, you see him lean there? Yeah. Yes, yep, he yep, leaned yep. forward. And right away, Palermo called the balk. Now Randolph's in scoring position, and Bobby Meacham, who's been swinging a hot bat, is up there with two out. Nice block by Fisk. The 
Malala give those catches a good workout. Jordy's got good stuff, but he is extremely wild. Ball runs down and it might have been a slider that Fisk uh, controlled, kept in front of him, no advance by Randolph. Boy, those colors, they're pretty colors. They bleed the set a little bit. High two and nothing. He's lead it two to one in the bottom of the second. Lawler walked 105 last year in 195 innings. A lot of walks. Ball three, three and nothing. Willie Randolph back to second. coach for the Chicago White Sox jogging out to the mound. Yankees have runners at first and second with uh, two down and they lead on a two run home run off the bat of Butch Weininger. Yankees lead by a score two to one. Seems that Lawler is having some problems pitching with uh, runners on. And uh, also, uh, Scooter, Lawler, I believe, hurt himself running in the outfield yesterday. As we look at Dan Spill, our right-hander, getting loose in the bullpen. We've seen him before with the Cleveland Indians. Yeah, good observation, Bill. Lawler did injure himself slightly, and it was a little bit of doubt as to whether he would start today. All right, Don Mattingly popped to third his first time up. Two out, two on. Yankees lead two to one. Slider nicked the outside corner. Well, Dave Zinn just brought us by the new 1985 official Yankee yearbook. A lot of pretty good ball players on the cover of that thing. Oh, man. That's something Ruth, Gehrig, DiMaggio, Mantle, Maris, and the late Thurman Munson. You can get one. Uh, you can get the 1985 Yankee yearbook. Five dollars and a half by mail. Send your check to the director of publications, Yankee Stadium, Bronx, New York, 10451. Five dollars and fifty cents. That includes postage and handling. One ball, one strike. Low two one. for that ground. It was a breaking pitch down. A little unusual for Mattingly. A little over anxious. The Yankees pick up two runs. Three hits. No errors. Two men left. End of two. The Yankees two and the White Sox one. Channel 11. All right. We're ready to go in the top of the third and the Yankees lead by a run. White Sox will send up Rudy Law, Hal Baines, and Greg Walker. And they got a uh, pretty outstanding speed and power combination in this lineup. He laid down that sacrifice bunt which led to a run. In the first inning, Strike one. Dale Barra in on the edge of the grass. Oh, he bluffed a bunt, drew the bat back, one on one. Whitson doesn't look like he minds pitching inside, Bill. No, he doesn't. You've got to come inside once in a while to set up the pitch away. Even though Dale Barrow was playing in, 
It's hard to bunt that pitch way in there to third base, so he was moving and tried to bunt it. I think he would would rather that ball be just a bit away from him to lay it down the third base. Of course, you're the greatest bunter there ever. But, yeah, but left-handed. If I were left-handed, I probably would have led the league in hitting for drag, five years. Drag drag got a couple of step uh, oh, head starts. Oh man, they really got a head start. Slice foul right in the mezzanine and out again. The fan dropped it and lost it, and that kid got it. We've got one of the best bunters in the park. He threw the first ball out today. He slapped that ball to shortstop. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Mantle was he was very seldom, if ever, thrown out on a bunt attempt. Right to Willie. And smothers that one nicely, one away. Well, he still has to get used to this infield. Yeah, he has more problems here than any place else. Well, this year especially. The infield sort of changed over the over the years. Each year is a different one, it seems. And you see, Willie's still waiting back and lets the ball come to him. When Once he gets the lay of the land, he'll start charging that ball and get it in the air. All right. Al Bain single to left field to drive in a run. That's a right. long fly. Holy cow. So we talked I about Phil. You don't know whether to pitch him outside or inside. It. Now he pitched him outside before and he slapped the ball past Barra. Came inside this time. He hits a home run. He's just a good hitter. He, I'm telling you, against the Yankees, he is something else. He must do it against a lot of clubs. I mean, I'm just saying the Yankees, but that's all we see him against. Baines getting his first home run. Here it is again. This one is <laughs> down and in, and he just golfs it out of here. We're tied at two. Baines has both runs batted yep. in for the White Sox. And Walker pops one up in shallow left. Ken Griffey moving on. Makes the catch two way. Feeling better than he has in a long, long time. That'll bring up Carlson Fisk, who struck out his first time up. Carlton asked for time, get it, and then something got in his eyes, and he really put his hand over his uh, head in case it were coming in. Who was the American League MVP in 1950, Scooter? I was. Oh. <laughs> and Meacham, can he get him? Nope. Now that could be a double error. That could be two errors on one play for Meacham. A little tough play going to his left. Uh, they're going to just give him one. Ball seemed to kick back on him, and then he made the mistake of trying to throw Fisk out. Here he would look like an all-new giveaway is coming up on Sunday, May 5th. It's Citibank Yankee Umbrella Day. All fans attending the Yankee Kansas City Royal game on Sunday afternoon, May 5th, will take home a free blue and white Yankee umbrella, compliments of Citibank. Don't miss this new great giveaway. Now this place is almost full. Opening day here in 1985. These fans saw Mickey Mantle throw out the uh, first ball. They've also seen some fireworks. A home run by Al Baines and a two-run shot by the Yanks' Butch Weiniger. Now Dave Winfield will try to get things ignited for the Yankees here in the third. Scooter. All right, big Dave walked his first time up. Good year against White Sox pitching last year. Strike one. He's 
going to throw one of those fastballs away. And Winfield's going to hit it right out in right center field over the fence. Two balls and a strike. In the background, Scooter, that home run by Hal Baines was his 98th. And he becomes the leading left-handed home run hitter for the White Sox. Oh, he lifts one in his shallow right center. It's going to drop in. He uh, looked like he hit him right off the hands on that, but he's so strong, he got it out there far enough for a base hit. Winfield's seventh base hit in 18 times at bat this year. Watch it again. See, he got his hands away. Doesn't like that ball inside. No. He got those hands in and fought it off, though. As you mentioned, he's so strong that he can get away with this and a base hit for Winfield. Man, that was right in on him. I don't know how he did it. All right, Don Bell now, who struck out his first time up. Nobody out. 2-2 Two -two ball game. Perfect double play ball. And they get it. He took a little bit off that pitch, Bill. And kept it down. All right, that's a rally killer, that play. Oh. Hey, the Sox infield has really improved with Salazar yeah. third base and Guillaume at short. All right, two out now, and Ken Griffey, who is single and scored ahead of Weiniger's homer in the second inning, will be the batter. He used a lot of guys over third last year. He used Vance Law. They used, uh, let's see who else they have over there. A bun attempt foul back and out of play. The kid that's playing, uh, that can play shortstop, that did so well against the Yankees, uh, has played over there. That's uh, Scott Fletcher Scott for them Fletcher, last right. year. They even used uh, the kid they released, that left-handed hitter. Squire. Mike Squire yeah, is at right. the third base. Left-handed thrower. They even used him at third yep. in a couple of ball games. One strike on Ken Griffey. Two out, nobody on. Two-two the score. Bottom of the third. One on one. in a strike. Yogi Berra. Lawrence Peter. Low three and one. That's Yogi's offensive stance over there. He stays <laughs> on that side of the dugout when the Yankees are batting. And he moved down to the other side when they are in the field. Tony La Russa, right? Yeah. Griffey's on. Walk number four given up by Lawler. So Griffey at first. Let's see if he tries to steal a base. He told you he's feeling a little frisky. Here's Dale Barra. Fly to deep right center his first time up. of the plate strike one but well, only one team still undefeated in baseball scooter that's the Tigers they're five and oh somebody said they can't possibly get off to a 35 and five stop but they're <laughs> certainly doing a good job well, Sparky thinks this year's edition is better than last year's Ooh. not even close at first I don't know about that but Hernandez is picking up right where he left off. Doing a great job out of the bullpen. One on one. Well, they play Milwaukee at home tonight. Boston is playing in Kansas City tonight. Seattle's playing out in Oakland tonight. Uh, Seattle lost their first game. Yep, they're six and one. 
51,000 at the Kingdom. Oh, no, that was in Minnesota. But the Twins open. They got shut out. That's slow. 2-1. Got to separate these domes. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. Two out. Played so well that Phil Bradley's American League Player of the Week. The no youngster kid. who plays center field, the former University of Missouri quarterback. Oh, uh, yeah. He was with the Mets a little bit, I think. No, no, no. no. He, he was in their farm system. Oh. Throw to first. Lloyd Griffey's back. Salazar at third base makes the catch. No runs, a hit, no errors, a man left. Bill White and Spencer Ross will carry you along. At the end of three, it's the White Sox two and the Yankees two. $198 to $408, including hotel and airfare. At the end of three, you're at Yankee Stadium. It's 2-2, two -two, Yankees 2, the White Sox 2. White Sox took a one to nothing lead in the first inning on an air charge to Randolph and an RBI single by Hal Baines. Yankees went ahead 2-1 to one on a two-run home run by Butch Weininger in the bottom of the second. Weininger's first home run of the year. And then the White Sox came back and tied it in the third on a home run into the right field seats by their right fielder, Hal Baines. Bill White along with Spencer Ross to carry you through the next three. And the uh, White Sox will send up Darrell Boston, Luis Salazar, and Julio Cruz against Mr. Whitson, Ed Whitson. Kind of get the feeling, Bill, that uh, this one could be a 10-9 ball game before it's all over. Neither pitcher is dominated, so to speak. Boston uh, got an infield hit up uh, behind second base in the second inning, so he's one for one. And he takes a strike from Whitson. He showed us some good speed, too, Bill. He can run. He has excellent speed. We mentioned to Phil last year he stole six bases in 35 games and did not get thrown out. It's one and one on Boston. He's been up 16 times, has eight base hits, so he's batting an even 500 early. And he's driven in three runs. That'll be out of play. Barra giving chase off third base, but no chance. One and two on Boston. We mentioned the Yankees have won two, lost three so far this year, and the White Sox have won three and lost two. There are two games behind Seattle in the American League West. And had a real good series in Boston, yeah. uh, winning the final two games of that three-game series. That just missed wide, two and two on Boston. The home plate umpire is Larry McCoy. He's a veteran. Weiniger wants Whitson to shake off before he gives a sign. Now he gives a fastball sign. And it's caught by the first down, Bobby Meacham. Well, Bobby Meacham gave one up earlier in the ball game, and a ground ball by Carlton Fisk. He makes up for it right here, getting the leadoff batter, times it perfectly as Boston goes with a pitch toward right field. And you can see Weiniger setting the sign outside, and Meacham timing it perfectly, makes the leaping grab for the first out of the inning. Well, the catcher will tell a pitcher to shake off, although there's no sign. He wants to get the hitter to thinking a little bit. Here's Salazar. He got a base hit off Whitson's glove in the second inning, so he's one for one. It's kind of a freaky inning. Yeah. Started it off with the back-to-back infield singles. Popped up into shallow center. Now Cotto goes back. Lynn taking that ball, and there are two outs. Lynn must be blowing toward right center here. Flags show it just a, a little bit, but apparently that one got up real high, and it did get caught in a wind draft. And Cotto had to go a little bit further back than it appeared he would have to go. And uh, here's Julio Cruz. Cruz has been up once, and uh, he bounced to second base. Yankees two, the White Sox two. We're at the top of the fourth. And that's back out of play. Cruz had a knee operation uh, over the winter. White Sox a little bit upset. I don't think they knew about it. Well, they couldn't quite figure his year last year. He'd been to arbitration. He'd fought them, finally got the big contract, and uh, really had a horrible, horrible season last year. But then again, so did just about everybody on the White Sox off that incredible year they had back in 1983. No balls, two strikes on Cruz. He's been up 21 times, three base hits, and three runs batted in. 
Yeah, I guess you could point your finger at, at certain players. A lot of people point their finger at this young man, but uh, point your finger at these guys. and say, When they have the bad year after the big contract, that's the reason why. But what about the guys who get the big contracts and continue to play the way they played every day? One and two on Cruz. And it's two and two as Whitson comes inside. Hey, Julio had uh, come to the White Sox from Seattle for Tony Bernazard. And Seattle sent Bernazard to Cleveland. That might fall and will fall. Base hit for Julio Cruz. Now the White Sox like to run, and Julio, if that knee isn't giving him, evidently it's the left knee. You can see the padding on yeah. it. See if they'll turn him loose. They did in spring training, so obviously they'll let him run here. Well, he can run. He only stole 14 bases last year, but prior to that, uh, he had never stolen less than 43 in a major league season. Perfect opportunity to run here with two men out. And Ozzie Guillen's a batter. He's gotten on on an error and bounced to short, so he's 0 for 2, but he scored a run. Yankees and the White Sox tied at 2 in the top of the fourth. Good speed at first base, and Julio Cruz, and two down. Off Randolph's glove, and Cruz will go to third. Well, that should go as a base hit, but it could easily have been an out. Willie got toward the ball, got the glove down, and the ball just skittered beyond him. And instead of the third out of the inning, the White Sox have runners at the corners as we look at it again. Gian bounces the ball. Randolph is there. That's the kind of play you expect to normally see Willie make, but it pops over his glove. Cotto plays it in the center field, and the White Sox have runners at first and third, an opportunity to move ahead here in the top of the fourth inning. And Rudy Law is a batter. He sacrificed in the first inning, so he did not get credit for a time at bat. He moved Guillen to second base, and Guillen scored on the single by Baines, and he bounced to Randolph to at second base in the third. This is trouble. Griffey! A diving stab out in left field. That saved a run. Bobby Meacham, no runs, two hits, two men left on base. As we watch it again, and at the end of three and a half innings of play, it's tied. Yankees two and the White Sox two. for Bobby Meacham takes two base hits for the white way from the White Sox and here's Butch Weininger to lead it off in the bottom of the fourth and Weininger takes low and in Butch hit a two run home run in the second inning to give the Yankees a two to one lead of course the home run by Baines tied it in the White Sox third Salazar at third base he's got a good arm and there's one down we mentioned Spencer that the White Sox have really improved the left side of their infield Changed things around quite a bit. In fact, uh, we were talking about Cruz a moment ago. He's really the senior man in that infield, and he, he came to the team, I think, back in, uh, once the season started in 1983 in June. So uh, Tony La Russa finally moved things around after, after last year when it was such a disastrous season for Chicago. You're going with quickness. Here's Henry Cotto, the center fielder. Cotto's been up once, and Salazar made a fine play on his smash in the second inning and threw him out. Cotto takes the strike. Yankees two and the White Sox two playing the bottom half of the fourth inning here at Yankee Stadium. And it's one and one. Yankees making a pretty good deal with the Chicago Cubs to pick up Bordy and Cotto and Hassey. It's an eighth year whole roster on one one deal. <laughs> Two balls and a strike on Cotto. Lala really looks shaky in the opening inning, didn't he, Bill? Well, he's probably a little nervous. He... Mm -hmm. That's foul. Came out of the Yankee farm system. Pitched here for the Yankees, won a game. Traded to uh, San Diego. San Diego sent him to the White Sox. Part of the deal for Lamar Hoyt. 
Two and two. Foul into the seats behind first base. Good catch down there. That's just one I get out of the way of. <laughs> Kid's got big hands. Two and two on Cotto. Cotto's been up five times this year, has two base hits. Just missed. You notice that Lawler's missing low. Of course, he's used to pitching down over in the uh, National League. It's a little bit turf, more right. of a low ball league, too. The umpires call the low pitch more, and your more your hitters like to go after that low pitch. Now he tries to come up, and he walks Cotto. That's the fifth walk given up by Lawler. He's thrown quite a few pitches. So Cotto at first base, one down, and Willie Randolph is a batter. You ever been able to figure that out? It's the same game. They're the same umpires, and yet there's kind of a just a different kind of philosophy. Well, in the beginning, Spencer, it was the uh, National League umpires using those inside chest protectors and having uh -huh. to hide behind the catcher, and the American League umpires had those big balloons and they had to stand up. Uh -huh. So that uh, I felt made the strike zone a bit higher. But now, just about every American League umpire uses the inside protector. Salazar bobbles and everybody's going to be safe. Walker alertly blocks the ball at first base. And let's see what the official score rules. Cotto goes down to second base. They're going to give Salazar an error. As Randolph is safe at first. Well, Salazar, who they say can play the outfield a little bit better than he's played third, has looked good at third today. But this one, he tries to short hop it. He plays it off his right ankle instead. And then tries a throw that perhaps he might not should have even have tried because he almost threw that one away. And there are runners now at first and second. There you see it again, bouncing off his ankle. No chance at all of making a play. And a good play by Walker at first base. He blocks the ball. And by doing so, it keeps Cotto from going to third. But the Yankees have Cotto at second, Randolph at first now, with just one man away. And here's Bobby Meacham, who has walked, stolen a base, and walked. He hasn't been a bat officially yet. Boston in center started in, almost misjudged the ball, but he runs it down, and Cotto will go to third after the catch. Meacham's been hitting the ball so well, had that good weekend series. We take a look at Boston out in center field, his first appearance here at Yankee Stadium. Meacham with four hits on Saturday, two on Sunday, and really tags into this one. It's good body into it and zings those wrists around and lines it to center field. Long out with Cotto moving to third. There are two men away, and Don Mattingly with an opportunity to put the Yankees out in front. And Mattingly 0 for 2 in the ball game. He's popped to second and bounced to first. Don's been up 23 times, five base hits, two runs batted in so far this year. Runners at first and third, two outs. Yankees two and the White Sox two. We're in the fourth inning. And the slider misses wide. White Sox two runs, seven hits in error. The Yankees two runs, four hits. They've made the two errors. By the way, take the hit away from Carlton Fisk back in the third, and it's just an error charged to the shortstop, Bobby Meacham. No base hit for Fisk. Could have been two errors in the play, Bill. Could have been. I don't know how they got him to second base. <laughs> Out of play. Generosity. <laughs> Meacham bobbled the ball. Fisk reached on that, and then Meacham threw the ball away, and that's how Fisk got down to second. Well, obviously, they didn't, they wouldn't give him the bobble on the bobble. A bobble on the bobble. Yeah, the error was on the throw. <laughs> the error was on the throw, okay. <laughs> but he doesn't bobble the first bobble. <laughs> that's the bobble they didn't give him the error on. <laughs> one and one here. Popped up, and the shortstop Guillen has a play. That'll retire the side. Mattingly pops to his short. No runs, uh, no hits, uh, one error, and uh, two men left. At the end of four, the Yankees two, the White Sox two. We're moving out of the top of the fifth inning. 2-2 two -two ball games. White Sox two runs, seven hits, one error. Yankees two runs, four hits, and two errors. The final game of this series, 
Thursday afternoon. That game will get underway at 1 o'clock. The Yankees against the same Chicago White Sox in the series finale Thursday afternoon here at the stadium at 1 o'clock. Top of the fifth inning, Harold Baines, Greg Walker, and Carlton Fisk for the Chicago White Sox. And Baines, the man who tied this ball game. Back in the third inning, his home run, the 98th of his career. You play in Chicago, you're not going to be a home run hitter. 98 career home runs. That is the most ever by a White Sox left-handed hitter. And he takes low from Whitson. Well, Ed pitched him away, singled the left, driving in a run, pitched him in and down, and he hit a home run. I guess he's going to try to pitch him down the middle this time. Two <laughs> balls. And no strikes. Incredibly underrated player. Cleveland leading Baltimore three nothing in the fifth. Texas out in front of Toronto. That's four three also in the fifth inning. Two balls and a strike on Baines. Philly in Chicago. That ball game is scoreless uh, in the fifth inning. Mets play tonight in Pittsburgh. Missing wide. Three balls under strike on Baines. Yankees two and the White Sox two in the top of the fifth. White Sox have seven hits. The Yankees four. And that's high Baines walks. Youngster from St. Michael's, Maryland. Underrated player. He's one of those classic examples. They talk about players. Gee, if they played New York, everybody know who they are. Baines led the American League in slugging percentage last year, and uh, not exactly a household name, Bill White. <laughs> he's a good player. I think yeah. the players realize how good he is, and obviously he's a Chicago White Sox, and their fans like him. Here's Greg Walker, one for two, and he takes a strike. There's Baines. foot no play it's a foul ball it's no balls and two strikes on Greg Walker no interesting going back to the first inning Bill uh, the White Sox built a run right off the bat Gian takes a walk and they sacrifice uh, Mulvers we watch this again and that hurts right off uh, the right leg and you see uh, Walker still walking it off but here you go in the fifth inning now 2-2 two -two ball game and they're hitting away. Well, this big fella, I don't think he knows how to bunt. <laughs> He's a good, low fastball hitter, and he can hit it a mile. In fact, this spring, he carried the Whitson way back deep uh, at uh, Fort Lauderdale Stadium on a low fastball. No balls, two strikes on walk. And it's one and two. has been up now 24 times has six hits he's batting 250 popped him up left side Meacham calling one away Baines will stay at first base oh, wait, that walk given up to Baines the first walk Whitson's given up in the game has a strikeout. Here's Carlton Fisk who struck out in the first and got on on an error by Meacham in the third. So Fisk is 0 for 2. Whitson struck him out with a high fastball. Fisk came back yesterday. He hadn't lifted a bat. He said in about 10 days against uh, live pitching. He pitched a hit against the machine. He had a hip pointer. Kind of injury that uh, baseball players really don't get too often. More of a football injury. And he had four RBIs against the Red Sox yesterday. Revenge. Revenge. But he can't forget Boston. That number. Number 72. <laughs> Turned it around from his Red Sox uniform. Good slider on the outside corner. A strike on Fisk. Fisk played most of last year with pulled stomach muscles. Went on a program this year and he gained about 15 or 20 pounds but he's stronger. Guess he figured he wasn't going to get any faster. No, he's not going to steal any bases you know or too many of them. <laughs> 20 pounds less or 20 pounds more. 
And he catches just about every day. So it's a ball and a strike on Carlton Fisk. One out, one on. And that's a strike. One and two. Got the low call there, Bill. Yep. Got it on the outside edge. Both Lawler and Whitson last year pitching uh, for San Diego. Whitson, of course, left uh, on his own volition while Lawler was traded away. That'll be a base hit. Let's see what Baines will he challenge. No, he will not challenge Winfield. He'll hold at second base. It's a big plus in having a right fielder by the name of Dave Winfield. Yes. He will not take liberties. Line drive. Winfield just played it on one bounce, and Baines, who has uh, fair speed, he didn't even round the base. No, nope, he, he left first right. base. Well, I'll just go to second and <laughs> <laughs> wait and see what happens. Here's Ron Kittle, the designated hitter. He's fouled out and bounced out. He's 0 for 2. Runners first and second. There is only one away here in the fifth. And a strike to Kittle. Yankees two and the White Sox two. Yankees two runs coming on a two run home run by Butch Weiniger in the bottom of the second. Al Baines has singled in a run and hit a home run for the other run for the Chicago White Sox and it's no balls two strikes on Kittle. Kind of a weak strain, a swing from a very, very strong power hitter like Kittle. And he got him on a bad pitch, and there are two outs. Second strike out for Whitson. Really had him fishing. Mm -hmm. Well, Kittle struck out 137 times last year and shows you how he does it once again. He's a classic example of a guy who either hit it out or swing it air. And he strikes out once again. Well, here's Darrell Boston, the center fielder. Got an infield hit up the middle in the second inning and a lined one to Meacham. That's short in the fourth, so he's one for two. Runners at first and second with two outs. And that pitch missed inside. Whitson got roughed up in Boston, but he's done well here so far this afternoon in the stadium opener. Pitch is low. It's 2-0. Oh. White Sox won the season series against the Yankees last year. They won seven. The Yankees won five. Popped up. Way up. Randolph backing up. Nakato comes on, but Randolph camps under it. That'll retire the side. No run to base it. And the Sox leave two. At the end of four and a half innings of play, what the Chicago White Sox two and the Yankees two. Let's pause for a station identification. Well, we move now to the bottom half of the fifth inning. The ball game is tied at two. It would not have been that way as we move back to the top of the fourth inning, if not for this incredible grab by Bobby Meacher for the final out and a pop fly by Rudy Law. The White Sox had runners at first and third. Everybody was moving, and that one drops. Cruz would have scored. Guillen might have scored. But instead, we still have a 2-2 ball game now. Moving to the bottom half of the fifth inning, and the Yankees with the meat of the order. Winfield, Baylor, and Griffin. Bill? All right, Spencer. Dave Winfield has walked, and he's single into right center field. So he's one for one in the game. The White Sox, two runs, eight hits. The Yankees, two runs on four. Winfield now seven base hits and 18 times at bat. A home run, three runs batted in. Winfield and Weiniger have the Yankees two home runs this year. Weiniger the first in the remodeled Yankee Stadium. Although it would have been a home run in the old stadium. Ball carried into the seats. One ball, no strikes on Winfield. Winfield also from San Diego, former Padre. And it's two balls, no strikes. Well, 
they put the lights on here at the stadium. The day started off very sunny after yesterday's rain. But a lot of overhead clouds right now, so they have put the lights on a little bit before the hour of four in the afternoon. 2-0 on Winfield. And it's playable. Carlton Fisk, the catcher, in foul ground. One down. I think Dave would like to have gotten a better swing at a two-ball, no-strike pitch, but the pitch somehow fooled him, and he got under it. Here's Don Baylor, who was struck out and bounced into a twin killing. Baylor 0 for 2. He's been up 20 times now. Three base hits. Normally a slow starter, but he always comes on and ends up among the league's, the team's RBI leaders and the league's. As we look at Tim Lawler. That's a bit low and in. Yankees have some action in their bullpen. 1 and 0 on Baylor. That's a fair ball. And a fan grabs that ball. Let's see if they'll send Baylor to second. They will. Fan interfered with the baseball. Don Baylor with a double. Ground, ground rule double for Don Baylor as a fan down that third baseline did indeed stick his hand out and make a play on the ball. Would have been a double anyway unless uh, the left fielder Law had played it perfectly off that wall. But right inside the bag, Salazar doesn't have a chance at it. He does make the lunge. Fair ball. The third base umpire, uh, Jerry Newdecker, right on the play. So Baylor is in its second, and the Yankees have the go-ahead run in scoring position. And the Yankees do have uh, some activity going on in their bullpen as uh, Joe Cowley has gotten up. Ken Griffey won for one in the game. He singled and scored ahead of Wanniger in the second inning and walked in the third. One out here in the fifth. And a strike to Griffey. In the nice league, the Mets played Pittsburgh tonight. That's foul. There's the right hander, Joe Cowley. Working in the Yankee bullpen, Ed Whitson, who didn't make it out of the second inning in his uh, first start in Boston. Hey, He's now that's uh, a mm -hmm. little change here. But a young lady as Ball girls. Yeah. First time I've seen that at the stadium. <laughs> No balls, two strikes on Griffey. That's one of the demands I made in my contract, Bill. What's that? Had to have ball girls down the line. No, there's a boy down the left side. Oh, okay. Well, one at least. A young fellow down the left side, a young lady on the right side. Popped it up into center field. Boston will take charge. He's a center fielder. And there are two outs. Yankees and the White Sox tied at two. Lawler has struggled, but he's only given up five base hits. There's the youngster, and he's a left-hander down the left field foul line. And a right-hander down the uh, first base line. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up to Dale Barrett now. Barrett's fly to center and popped to third, 0 for 2. He's looking for his first run bat end of the year. Dale's been up 14 times, has four base hits. He's batting 286. Ball on. Don Baylor down at second with two outs. Lawler spends an awful lot of time worrying about the base runners. He has balked in this ball game. to short. That's Guillen. And that'll retire the side. Yankees, no runs, a base hit. Drifty left at second base. We played five to score. The Yankees two and the White Sox two. 
moved down at the top of the sixth inning. The Yankees and the White Sox all even at two and two. And Ed Whitson continues on the mound here in the sixth inning. Whitson, uh, the victim of a Harold Baines home run in the third inning. Surrendered run also in the first on a couple of base hits. Run was unearned, though, as uh, Ozzie Guillen. Guillen. How, how are we going to pronounce that? Guillen. Julio Constable says Guillen. Julio Constable says Guillen. Yes, yeah, so I have to quit saying Guillen. Guillen. Saying Guillen, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's a pretty good ball player. Yeah, Whatever. Better learn how to pronounce it because he's going to be here. <laughs> yes, he's going to be here. Some of them, you know, some of them early in the season don't have to worry. They won't be there the next time you see them. But uh, he'll be here. They say he's got a better arm than Ozzie Smith. They say well, he has his own kind of range. arm. He's, he's got his range, range though. They Ozzie's say, range? No, they say he's, they say he has Ozzie's range. Hey, he's a pretty good shortstop there. This is uh, Luis Salazar, who is single and fly to center field, leading off for the White Sox. We're in the sixth inning, and the score is tied 2-2. Meacham at short, and there's one away. Can he do backflips like Ozzy? <laughs> we haven't seen him do much anything today in the field. As uh, a matter of fact, we've seen Bobby Meacham look a little like uh, Ozzy Smith today. He's made a couple of really fine plays, Meacham, taking a couple of base hits away from the White Sox. Hey, Whitson telling his third baseman, Barrett, to get in. He doesn't want him to want to cruise the bunt for base hit. It's the easy one, though, for Meacham. And a nice high toss to Mattingly for the first out. And the pitch to Cruz is a ball. Julio has bounced a second and single to center field. One out, nobody on in the sixth inning. Ball game moving right along here at the stadium. And that best ball got the outside corner. It's one and one. Evidently, Cowley just throwing for a little recreation out there. <laughs> oh, might know. Randolph will make the play. Mattingly started for the ball, but then he got back. And he's thrown out 4-3. That's Cruz for out number two. It's always a tough play for the first baseman on that slow hit ball. You want to go get it. And after you've been together, you see Mattingly going, after you've been together a while, you realize where your second baseman is. Or should be. It's another ground ball out. It's been a busy day for the infield. We're in the sixth inning. White Sox have made 17 outs. Fifth, only two of those outs have been registered in the outfield. And here's the kid we were talking about, Ozzie Guillen. We get that right, Julio? Yeah, I think so. He Gian. is. Gian. He had one for three with a run scored in the game. Interesting, they got him leading off. He doesn't like to take a pitch. Well, the Yankees had a fellow like that a few years back. He just got released by the Rangers. Mickey Rivers. Uh -huh. I think he would go up maybe 600, 700 times. <laughs> maybe look at ball four maybe 12 times all year. Manny Sanguian was like that, too. Manny, of course, never bat batted leadoff, though. But uh, this kid walked at about 13 times last year, nearly 500 at bats. Into center field, and Cotto is coming on and calling. And the side is retired for the White Sox in the sixth inning. Three up and three down for the first time in the ball game. And at the end of five and a half, the Yankees two and the White Sox two. Well, back here at the stadium, the Yankees are proud to once again open that Memorial Park section of Yankee Stadium for fan viewing. Since 1932, the Yanks have honored those who have made an outstanding contribution to Yankee pride for the erection of plaques and monuments in the center field section of Yankee Stadium. Now, for the first time since 1973, fans will be able to view the Memorial Park section before each home game. To visit that section, you proceed to section 36 on the field level main concourse. The viewing begins when the gate open and one half hour before game time. Miller Huggins, Luke Gehrig, Babe Ruth, Jacob Rupert, Edward Barrow, Joe D, Mickey Mantle, Joe McCarthy, Casey Stengel, Thurman Munson, Elston Howard, and Roger Maris. And, uh, always a treat for a uh, sports fan to come out to the stadium and get an opportunity to view those memorable plaques. Well, here is Butch Weiniger, who has accounted for both the Yankee runs with a two-run homer in the second. We're tied at two, bottom of the sixth, and here's Bill White. Bill? All right, Spencer Ross, Weiniger, and then Cotto, and then Randolph as the Yankees try to pull ahead in this ballgame against the White Sox. Weiniger batting 267. Into center field, and Boston should have an easy play. One away as Weininger first ball hitting off Lawler. 
Lawler has not gotten the Yankees out one, two, three in the ball game through the first five and a third or first five innings. And Whitson's done the job on the White Sox just once. And he's gotten his control down though a little bit better in the early going. He walked three men in the first two innings. He's walked only one since then. And when he gets the ball over, Tim Lawler is a tough pitcher. Cotto has bounced the third and he's walked. He's 0 for 1 in the game. A strike to Cotto. It's kind of a silly thing to say. I just said when he get, anybody gets the ball over, it's a tough pitcher. <laughs> but when he gets that fastball and that slider in, Bill, he is he is mighty tough because he has a good fastball, not an overpowering one, and a good slider. And that's high, one and one. Fisk wanted that ball a bit inside. Lawler threw it uh, over the plate and up. That'll be out of play. No chance for Baines. One and two on Cotto. Henry played 105 games for the Cubs last year and batted 274, so he does have a major league background with the National League East champs. Got him with the slider inside. Just threw that ball in on the fist, and uh, there are two outs. That's the second strikeout for Tim Lawler. He has walked five. And now he'll pitch to Willie Randolph, who has popped up single and gotten on on an air. <laughs> That's a little promo. <laughs> but Norton and friends, Norton and Grambit. a base hit for Randolph his second of the game and his sixth of the season so Randolph a two out single uh, between uh, short and third just about the same spot he uh, wrapped his first base hit back in the second inning first ball swinging on Tim Lawler Bobby Beecham has walked twice and flied to center field. Beecham came in among the leading hitters in the American League early. Julio Franco with the Indians at 556. Paul Molitor of Milwaukee at 524. Meacham now at 471. Came in at an even 500. But he's 0 for 1. An opportunity there for Willie Randolph to run as that ball bounced in front of Carlton Fisk and he had trouble getting to it. This is Rich, Rich Bordy. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's Rich Bordy out in the bullpen. The big guy, six feet seven inches. Came over from the Chicago Cubs. A lot of these guys getting a throwing in because tomorrow's an off day. to speak like this now. Good morning. Look who's just joined us. Robert Merrill. <laughs> Great job singing the national anthem. Bob Merrill. We both attended the same high school. Robert Merrill and myself. What school? Let's do Utrecht plug, High plug, plug School in plug Brooklyn. School. I, I, can't, I was there a couple of years after. What was the name of it in here? New Utrecht. New Utrecht. U-T-R-E-C-H-T. They put up two pretty good voices. Thanks so well, they threw me out. <laughs> <laughs> Salazar, he'll go to second for the force, and that'll do it for the Yankees in the six. No runs, a base hit, and a man left. At the end of six, it's tied. Yankees two, White Sox two on the Citibank scoreboard.
Stadium. We're all tied at two and two. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and WPIX, intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game, or any segment thereof, without the express written consent of the New York Yankees, is prohibited. Rudy Law leads it off against the Yankee right-hander Ed Whitson here in the seventh inning. Law 0 for 2, sacrificed in the first inning, sending Gee in the second, where he scored in a Harold Bain single and bounced to second and then popped to short. Here is Barra, high throw, and Mattingly was pulled off the bat. Barra charged in, got the throw off, it was high, and Mattingly pulled off the bag, and we'll have to wait for a decision by the official score. Running for the base hit, Rudy Law. Barra is there. The throw. He's got a beat, but you see Mattingly unable to keep the foot on the bag. And the error charged to Dale Barra on the play. So the White Sox get the lead runner on on the bunt by Rudy Law, and it'll bring up Harold Baines. Chicago, two runs, eight hits, one error. Yankees, two runs, six hits, and three errors. One of the errors leading to a Chicago run in the first inning. Guillen reached on a Randolph error and came around to score. Harold Baines been the offensive story for the White Sox today. Single, drove home a run in the first, and then Homer to right field in the third inning. His 98th career home run, most ever by a left-handed Chicago batter. And then walked in the fifth, so he's a perfect two for two. one old -oh pitch coming. Popped up. Ken Griffey. One man away. Baines is retired for the first time this afternoon on a soft fly to left field. And there's one man away here in the top of the seventh inning. Rudy Law down at first base. And the first baseman, Greg Walker, comes to the plate. Walker, one for three, blooped a single to left in the first. Fly to left and then popped to short. Taking a four to two lead. Greg Walker with 24 home runs last year. First pitch swinging and wax the ball. Winfield turned, saw, had no opportunity at it, and the White Sox have taken a four to two lead. his first home run of the season. You see Winfield just looking, and that one hits into the upper deck. Big home run for Greg Walker and a 4-2 lead for the White Sox. So Whitson, who gave up a home run to Bill Buckner opening day, has now given up two in this ball game, And the Yankees have fallen behind for the first time this afternoon. Here's Carlton Fisk. And Ken Griffey will have an easy play for the second out of the inning. But the damage done. One of those runs, of course, will be unearned. Law reaching on the air by Dale Barra. Two of the White Sox runs of the unearned variety today. Chicago with a 4-2 lead. And here's the designated hitter, Ron Kittle. Kittle popped to first, bounced to short, and struck out. Now lines a single. Could be a double to left field. It's up the alley. Cotto will cut it off. Kittle moves into second, makes the slight turn as the throw comes back into Bobby Meacham. But Ron Kittle with a double to left center field. And the White Sox have another runner in scoring position. And Yogi Berra is going to come out and make a visit to the mound to Ed Whitson, who has now given up 10 base hits in this ballgame. game. 
Pitch right down the pike. Kittle steps right into it and lines it up the alley. Griffey trying to move over. It gets by him. And Cotto will finally cut it off just at the base of the warning track. And moving it easily to second with a stand-up double is Ron Kittle. And that is going to be it for Ed Whitson. And the Yankees are going to bring on the big right-hander, Rich Bordy. So Whitson leaves after going uh, six and two-thirds innings. And while the pitching change is being made, let's take time out along the Yankee Baseball Network for the following message. So here's the left-hander, Bob Shirley, coming in as Yogi Berra likes to go for the lefty instead of the righty, Rich Bordy. With a left-handed hitter, Darrell Boston, coming to the plate. Shirley making his second appearance of the season. He pitched opening day in Boston against the Red Sox in relief. Won an inning and a third, gave up four hits, two runs. Both of them were earned and struck out one batter. Ed Whitson goes six and two-thirds innings, gives up ten base hits, walks one, strikes out two. Four runs, two of them earned, and he is responsible for the runner at second base, Ron Kittle. White Sox have taken a 4-2 lead here in the seventh inning. Rudy Law reached on an error by third baseman Dale Barra. Law bunting for a base hit. Barra played it, but his throw pulled Mattingly off the bag. And after Baines fly to left, Greg Walker with a towering home run into the upper deck in right field to give the White Sox a 4-2 lead. And after Fisk fly to left, Ron Kittle lashed a double up the power alley in the left center field. And that brings on Bob Shirley to pitch now to the center fielder Darrell Boston. Boston one for three in the ball game takes outside ball one. Boston single to center uh, check it infield single in the second inning. And that was retired by Bobby Meacham made a fine play in a line drive to shortstop and then uh, popped to second. This one fouled away behind the plate count goes even one ball and one strike. two ball game Yankees trailing for the first time this afternoon for a crowd of uh, about uh, 50,000 second time they fell behind one nothing went ahead two to one and then the White Sox tied it in the third pop to left field Ken Griffey is going to make all three put outs in the seventh inning but not before the Chicago White Sox come up with two runs on two bases there was one Yankee error one man left through six and a half White Sox lead it four to two chance for the Yankees to score some runs well Don Mattingly will start it off here for the Yankees in the seventh inning Mattingly's 0 for 3 popped to third grounded to first and popped to short He's had trouble with Lawler today Lawler's given up six hits. He's walked four, struck out two. High and inside, ball one. First time I've seen that a fan reached it, way out and hit it. This team is leading it by a score of four to two. This is Nelson's third appearance on April 11th in an eight to one loss to Milwaukee. Pitched an inning, gave up two hits, two runs, one of them earned, and against the Red Sox on the 13th of April, an inning and two thirds, gave up three hits, two runs, one of them earned. He has walked two and struck out one in the two and two thirds innings he has pitched thus far. And he will have to come in to face Dave Winfield, Don Baylor, and Ken Griffey. Pretty good part of the Yankee batting order, Scoot. Yeah, those are the guys you want to see coming up. And uh, Winfield, who is one for two, Baylor, who is one for three, and Griffey, who is one for two. The Yankees got a chance to get right back in this ball game. And, you know, when you got a full house like this, Spencer, you want to play your best ball. You want the fans to keep coming back. It was kind of sad in Cleveland with that 61,000 right. that they played so poorly. And by the same token, it was great for the Red Sox when they played so great against the Yankees opening day up there. 
And right here for the Yankees, it's been a kind of an afternoon where there have been some good things, there have been some bad things, there have been three errors. Bobby Meacham made one of them, but he also made a couple of sparkling plays in the field. But two of the errors have cost the Yankees runs. All right. And that's the difference in the ball game Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. So here is Winfield to face the right-hander, Gene Nelson. Winfield one for two. He walked, single to right, and popped out to the catcher, Carlton Fisk. it off with a double to right. He leads away from second. And right-hander Gene Nelson pitches to Dave Winfield. Up high, ball one. Nelson's got good control. Last year with the White Sox in 74 innings, he walked only 17 batters. pitch. Curveball stays inside. 2-0. Gene Michael coaching down the lines at third base for the New York Yankees. As Mattingly leads away from second. Winfield swung at a bad 2-0 pitch last time and popped it out to Fisk. This time he takes high and inside. Ball three. Tony La Russa in the back of the White Sox dugout. Dr. La Russa, an attorney in the state of Florida. Three and oh pitch. Strike one call. Well, Cleveland held on and beat Baltimore 6-3. Texas looking for a win. A couple Eastern Division teams having problems today. Mattingly away from second. 3-1 pitch to infield. Get deep to right center field. Way back. Bye-bye. Winfield go with that pitch. He gets those arms extended away from him. And it's like a gale blows out in right center field. Now that one was not a low line drive, as you, but he hit it just enough to get over there. Well, Baines went back to the wall, leap, but to no avail. And Dave Winfield's second home run of the season has tied this ball game at four and four. And here is Don Baylor. Baylor is one for three. Yogi peers out of the dugout, breathes a bit of a sigh of relief. That's the offensive spot for Yogi. <laughs> Defensively, he comes down this end. And who says ball players aren't superstitious? Uh, you ever step on the lines? Never. Never. On the bases, but not the lines. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> he never missed a base. <laughs> Tony La Russa back in his haunches in the dugout. Baylor doubled in his last at bat. Count goes two and one now. Nelson fell behind Winfield three and zero. Oh. Came in three and one and on the three and one pitch, Dave Winfield lashes one right center field, just to the right of the 385 foot marker, and the Yankees have tied this ball game up at four and four. Two on pitch, curveball, and this one is last foul into the upper deck. Baylor got a little too far out in front. Give it back to me, he says. It's amazing how he gets around on that inside pitch. Look at this. Boy, he gets the arms out and the head of that bat out so quickly. 
Chris come around quickly. 2-2 pitch to Baylor. It's a right field. This one is curving foul. Plenty far enough to have been a homer both ways. Now hit one to dead center. Well, this crowd has come to life here at the stadium as the Yankees have come from behind to score twice here in the seventh inning and tie the ball game at four. There's still nobody out. And the count two and two to Don Baylor. Fouled off into the White Sox dugout. Count holds two and two. They discussing the ball game? I think they're discussing Baylor and how to pitch to him. And Nelson keeps pitching him inside except for that one away he hit to right field. Well, here's the 2-2 pitch. Down low, inside. Count goes full to Don Baylor. Oscar Gamble. Oscar Gamble. A lot less so air. Different in, a lot uh, less air. Yeah. <laughs> Three and two to Baylor. Bounce foul down the third baseline. I don't know if you noticed, Phil, down the left field line, Yankees have a ball boy. The right field line, they have a ball girl. No, that's yeah. the first. First. Right-hander Gene Nelson on in relief of starter Tim Lawler. He surrendered a home run to Winfield to tie the ball game. And ball four to Don Baylor. Yankees have the lead run on base with nobody out here in the seventh inning. That might be all for uh, Nelson. We'll wait and see. Well, Britt Burns has sat down now. Ken Griffey comes to the plate. Griffey, single the left, scored a run, walk, and fly to center. Average now at 368. Seven for 19. Good play by Fisk. Blocked that uh, curveball that bounced in front of the plate. I want to let that uh, base runner get the second with the go ahead run and scoring position. Dave Duncan's going out to the mound, pitching coach. spot for Nelson and you really feel for the youngster after he gives up that long home run by Winfield and he's a young man who really has uh, never had control from no he gets the ball over but uh, he goes to three balls on Winfield there's Dave Rigetti down in the Yankee bullpen as getting, he begins to eat up getting near Rigetti time A 1 0 count. Baylor leading from first, leaning a little bit. The throw comes over to Walker. He's got a lot better move uh, than that kid, Tim Lawler. Yeah, and Lawler, the lefty, too. Yeah. Lawler just uh, seemed to concern himself too much with the base runner. Yeah. Teddy, he showed me something, though, and early in the ballgame, he really struggled, then he settled down. He's had control problems in the past. It looked like he was pushing the ball a little in the beginning of the yeah. ball game, Phil. Here's the line score. Ten hits for the Sox. Eight for the Yanks. Yanks have committed three errors to one for Chicago. Last to right field. This one is a foul ball. Griffey uh, is like a young Colt these days. I've never seen him with so much desire and uh, wanting to run right through spring training too yep. right, right from the outset well at the outset he was hurt right at the start from the moment he got back Griffey has uh, hit well played the field well and right now he's got a one and one count the 
Yankees have the go-ahead run at first base in the person of Don Baylor, who slides back in. One pitch, pitch out. Gene Michael down the lines at third base. You figure Baylor to run there? No. Nope. White Sox did. <laughs> yes, the White Sox did. <laughs> I didn't figure Baylor to run. But Nelson, Ron Hasse uh, coming in from the bullpen. Nelson stays in. We may say Hassey hit for Dale Barrett. Yeah. So. But then uh, LaRusso will probably make a switch. They're very concerned about Don Baylor. But Nelson has to start concerning himself with the plate. He walked Baylor. Went to three and one on Winfield before Winfield cracked the homer. Two on pitch, pitch out. Baylor is out at second base. Well, the White Sox were right on a two yep. one pitch. They pitched out. How do you like that? But you know why Bale is arguing? He made a tricky slide there. Let's watch this. He slides, stops. Now watch what he does with that left foot. And the tag is between his legs. You see that? He never <laughs> did touch him. Watch this. This is really beautifully done by Baylor, but it's like an automatic out. Now, the umpire... Now, look, he's got the glove down. Oh, and look at it. that. He, his foot was on the bag. Even Robert Merrill thought he was safe. <laughs> he was safe. This one down low and inside, so the count now goes full at three and two. To Ken Griffey. Mattingly started this inning off with a double. That was it for Lawler. On came Nelson, surrendered a home run to Winfield. This one up high, ball four. So Griffey is what? And Dale Barra will come to the plate. Interesting, though. He was safe, yes, Bill. Yes. But when's the last time you saw somebody throw a pitch out of a 2 and one pitch? No, that's a Tenny Fisk is uh, some catcher. Especially with your pitcher having some control problems. Yeah. He's going to three balls on everybody. Dale Barra's 0 for 3. Fly to center, pop to third, and bounce to short. Tied at four. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Curveball breaks in nicely for the strike on one. White Sox score two in the top of the seventh. One of them unearned. Dale Barazera setting it up. Greg Walker with the towering home run into the upper deck in right field. Yankees come back here in the seventh. The double by Mattingly. That was it for Lawler. Winfield's homer off Nelson. Baylor walk was thrown out stealing. And Griffey has now taken a walk. And once again, Nelson throwing as many balls over to first base as he's throwing to the plate. Oh, and one pitch up high, ball two. straight behind the plate. Fisk will make a run for it, and he has room and makes the play. And throws the ball right back to the pitcher. Well, Carlton Fisk may have put on 20 pounds. He may be stronger, but he's certainly not slower. Nope. He never was that quick a base runner, but uh, he got back here quickly. Nice. Yes, he did. The ball was not hit that high. Full speed, and then eases up. No 
else is kind of smiling at him. He, he threw a strike to Nelson. <laughs> Nelson wasn't expecting the ball, Bill. I know it. You got to be ready. Two men are out. Butch Weiniger will be coming to the plate for the Yankees. There is no action right now in the Chicago bullpen. Weiniger batting left-handed for the first time today. He homer to left in his first time at bat to account for the Yankees' first two runs, swinging a Lawler's first pitch, then bounced to third and fly to center. So he's one for three, batting righty. Here he is lefty. Well, the greatest switch hitter in all of baseball here today, as you know, right. Spencer, Mickey Mantle. And many times he hit in the same game, one right-handed and one left-handed. I'd like to see Butch duplicate that. Mantle uh, watching the ball game from uh, the owner's box to our left. He came over to say hello to me. I'm glad he stopped by. I didn't have a chance to, you know, rest working all the innings. You've been working. I know. This is terrible. But anyway, <laughs> same old Mantle. He was kidding around. Nice to see Roger Maris. Oh, Roger did something nobody ever thought would happen. 61 home runs. Still has the same crew cut. Yeah. Oh, and one pitch coming. Outside. Last night at the Yankee uh, homecoming dinner. Roger and Mickey were there. And I was up at the dais. And you know, when you're up at the dais with people like that, it, there is just a feeling of awe. Oh, I still get it whenever they're around. I got Roger's autograph. Yeah, I'm no not too old for that, fun. Scooter. One and one pitch. Base hit, right field. Cruz couldn't get to it. Baines throws on to third, but Griffey will be in there standing, and the Yankees have the go-ahead run at third. Butch Weiniger's second base hit of the ball game. Take a look at it again. Hit it near the end of the bat, but got around on it enough to get it by Julio. Nice try by Cruz. And Griffey, motoring around, makes third easily. Well, we go back to that attempted steal. Good try by Cruz, by Don Baylor. Yeah, and, and you know, as you mentioned, Spencer, it was odd seeing a, pitch, a catcher call for a pitch out two pitches in a row. And I think Yogi was banking on the fact they had pitched out and wouldn't do it again. And especially in a two-on-one count. Yep. We may see the left-hander coming in now, Britt Burns for the White Sox. Ron Hassey has been announced as the pinch hitter for Henry Cotto. And Yogi might change that now that uh, Britt Burns is going to be called in. Well, let's see. La Russa is now coming out to the mound. Burns had sat down. He has now gotten back up. He has his jacket in his hand in the bullpen. And uh, yes, Tony La Russa has signaled to the White Sox bullpen. We'll see the big left-hander, Britt Burns, come on in place of Gene Nelson. Now well, let's see what Yogi's move will be here. Here's Burns. Coming in from the bullpen. Well, the Yankees got fellas like Billy Sample. They've, uh, let's see who else they've got. They got Scott Bradley. Bradley who has yet to hit in the big leagues this season. Well, it looks like Sample is the um, only. Well, Vic Mata is is also on the bench and they're the two right hand batters and I believe Hassey's being called back uh, Spencer. There's Billy Sample with a bat in his hand. And it looks like it will be Billy Sample as Britt Burns is going to come on to pitch for the Chicago White Sox. Well Vic Mata is putting on a batting glove. I think it's Mata Spencer. Okay, could be Vic Mata. Burns was the winner in Boston on Sunday, coming out of relief. Uh, check it, he started the ball game on Sunday. This is a quick return for him here on Tuesday. Pitched five and two thirds innings against the Red Sox, got the win. Vic Mata will come up to pinch hit now, so he will hit for Hassey, who was announced as the pinch hitter for Cotto. 
Burns got the win against the Red Sox Sunday, gave up nine hits, five runs, four of them earned, walked three, struck out four. As the White Sox beat the Red Sox by a score of 11 to 6. Big left hander Gene Nelson had a very inauspicious less than one inning. Gave up a home run to Winfield, walked Baylor and Griffey, got Barrett to pop up to Fisk, and then gave up a single to Weiniger. So there are runners at first and third with uh, two men away here in the bottom of the seventh inning. We're tied at four. So the left-hander, Britt Burns. I don't know whether Fish might be aware of it, but I've seen Vic Motto with two out, lay down a perfect bunt, beat it out, and drive in a run. Well, Carlton Fisk uh, coming back from a uh, conference at the mound with Britt Burns. Burns at a very disappointing season last year. It was a disappointing year for the White Sox. They won 99 games the year before and had the biggest drop off of any winner in the history of Major League Baseball. They went from 99 wins to last season only 74. So here is Vic Mata to face Burns. I'll tell you Salazar's really deep at third base. He shortens up. Seen him drop now. That's going to alert him. Well, now they got to be thinking. Oh, yeah. Salazar's moved in. Man, that would have been perfect. In a situation like this, you don't, you never think bunt when you're out in the field or pitching or catching. You just know so intent on the game. But Mata, who is an excellent bunter, by the way. Well, Salazar is still playing even with a bag at third base. And Mata bounces it to third. Good play by Salazar. And the throw on to Walker for the out. He short hopped the ball nicely, threw on to first, and the sides retire. But not before the Yankees come up with two runs on a Winfield home run, three base hits. There were no Chicago errors. Two men left through seven. We're tied. Yankees four and the White Sox four. Stadium. And we'll talk more about Dave in just a moment, but... A reminder, there's two big giveaways coming up early this season. This weekend, it's the popular Ivory Soap Yankee calendar giveaway. All fans, this Saturday and Sunday, they come a free 85 Yankee calendar, compliments of Ivory Soap. And on Sunday, May 5th, all fans, when the Yankees play the Kansas City Royals, receive a blue and white Yankee umbrella, compliments of Citibank. So make plans to enjoy both these great giveaways. Ivory Soap calendar weekend this Saturday and Sunday. Citibank Umbrella Day, Sunday, May the 5th. And now you can talk about Rigetti. You can talk about Rigetti because he comes on here and he right now becomes the pitcher of record in a 4-4 ball game as we go to the eighth inning for Rigetti, his fifth appearance of the year. He's pitched a total of three and two-thirds innings, given up uh, three base hits, no runs. He has walked three and struck out three, and he's already recorded two saves. One in the 6-3 victory over Cleveland on Saturday came on to get the final out of the ball game with two on and two out of the night, and then uh, saved the 2-1 victory for Phil Necro on Sunday, pitching an inning and a third of no-hit baseball. And right here, he will face the bottom part of the Chicago batting order, Luis Salazar, followed by Julio Cruz, and back to the top, and Ozzie Guillen. Salazar, one for three, got an infield single in the second, fly to center and bounced to short. We're tied at four. Fastball fouled away, strike one. Ball one, one ball, one strike. Getty also pitched in two of the ball games at Boston. Fastball, strike two, swinging. Boy, he's throwing just as hard as he did in Cleveland, and they really couldn't get around on there. Look at this pitch. That 
way back, and the ball is by him. Ball sitting in Weidegger's glove when Salazar finally got around. Rigetti, good. Holy cow. I don't believe it. He, he has done that many times. Huh. Unbelievable. Caught it in between his legs with his glove behind his back. He, he has made great play. Watch this again. This is unbelievable. Look what I got. And he didn't panic. He made it look like he does it every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even have a smile on his face. Well, there's one man away. Rigetti takes the hit away from Salazar. And here's Julio Cruz. Takes up high ball one. Cruz is one for three. Bounce the second twice and single. out toward the outfield. The Yankees are playing uh, Cruz straight away. Inside, ball two. The Yankees tying the ball game in the bottom of the seventh and a two-run. Dave Winfield home run at four. Fouled away. Count goes even. Two balls, two strikes. Big crowd here at the stadium. Opening day. Final game of the series Thursday at 1 o'clock. The 2-2 pitch. A pie. for the fastball, Mr. Cruz. Up high. Ball four. So Cruz walks. And the White Sox have the go-ahead run at first base with only one man away. One thing, the Yankee pitchers have only given up two walks. One by Whitson. And uh, now one by Rigetti. Going to see a pinch hitter here now for the Chicago White Sox. Tom Pachorek is going to come up to hit for the shortstop Ozzy Gian. Oh, it's not Pachorek. Scott Fletcher. So Scott Fletcher comes up to hit. For Ozzy Gian, he'll go in to play shortstop. He was the regular shortstop for the White Sox last year, playing in 149 games. Pachorek is on deck, so uh, he may be hitting for Rudy Law. They might have Fletcher up there just to uh, sacrifice. Get that runner in scoring position. So Fletcher to pinch hit here in the eighth inning. Strike one call. Dave Rigetti, Yankees third pitcher of the afternoon. Ed Whitson started, went six and two thirds. Here is Cruz leading away from first. Bob Shirley got the final out of the seventh inning, and Rigetti on here in the eighth. One pitch. A pie, ball one. Cruz on it first. One one pitch fouled away up over the Yankee dugout. And the count goes one ball, two strikes. I'll tell you yesterday about this time, a little bit later, I didn't think there'd be a ball game today, Phil. No. But what a day it has turned out to be. Beautiful. And the crowd beginning a chant for Mr. Rigetti. Cleveland beating ball. 
Baltimore today. Texas out in front by four over Toronto in the eighth inning. Rigetti with a one-two pitch to Fletcher fouled away into the right field stands. The count holds. Look at those cubbies, huh? Yep. I mean, they've been getting some kind of pitching. Good baseball team. Looks like Fletch is looking for that ball away, Spencer, and just getting a piece of it. I think if Rigetti comes inside, he'll get him. One two pitch. Ooh, just missed outside. Ball two, two balls, two strikes to Fletcher. There's one man away. We're in the top of the eighth. We're tied at four. White Sox four runs, ten hits, one error. Yankees four runs, nine hits, three errors. Two of those errors leading to Chicago runs. One two pitch. Right field, Winfield racing toward the line, but that one's going to be out of play. Cruz was running on that pitch, had a good jump. He continues to pitch Fletcher, Fletcher away, and he keeps going with the pitch. Watch Julio take off. Real good jump. Yeah. Though. We'll see if he goes again. Count is two and two. Cruz holds as Rigetti throws over. to the pinch hitter Scott Fletcher Julio Cruz down there at first base taking a base on balls not for good fielding play by Rigetti this could be a real jam right here oh yes once again the 2 2 pitch up high count goes full three balls two strikes to Scott Fletcher Larry McCoy, the home plate umpire. Three two pitch, Cruz is running. Ball is hit to right field. Cruz will have to get back as Dave Winfield one hands it for the second out. They sent Cruz running that time on the three and two pitch. And there are two men away, and Tom Pachorek will become the next pitch hitter for Tony LaRusso's White Sox. Well, Rigetti gets Salazar on a ground ball that he has to make a super fielding play on, then walks Cruz, and then goes to three and two. Uh, and pinch hitter Scott Fletcher before getting him in a fly ball. And here is the veteran Tom Pachorek to pinch hit for Rudy Law. We're tied at four. We're in the top of the eighth. Base hit to left field. Cruz will hold it second as Griffey plays it back in at a shortstop Jeff Bobby Meacham. So the White Sox now have the go-ahead run down at second base in the person of Julio Cruz as Tom Pachorek delivers a pinch hit single. And a tough man coming to the plate right now, Harold Baines. He has been the offensive story for the White Sox today. RBI single in the first, homer to right field in the third. He has also walked and fly to left, so officially two for three, two RBIs. For Pachorek, that's his second base hit in nine at bats this season. And Rigetti with his work cut out for him. 
Left field, down the line, long run for Griffey. It is a foul ball. Well, there's just Close no way ball. to pitch this Bain. <laughs> pitch him outside, he hits a rifle to left field, inside, he hit it in the seats. And that shot he hit into the seats was some towering mm -hmm. home run. Upper deck here at the stadium. when you play for the White Sox you're not going to lead the league in home runs not, nope. not in that ballpark you design your team for that the old go-go Sox back in the 50s and they've got a similar team this year mm -hmm. they got some people who can hit it though this fellow Baines and Ron Kittle <laughs> outside corner strike two Are two men out. There are two men on. We're tied at four. We're in the top of the eighth. And the 0-2 pitch to Baines. Willie Randolph to meet him for the force. The side is retired. So Rigetti gets out of a jam. The White Sox, no run. One hit. No Yankee errors. Two Chicago runners left on base through seven and a half. We're still tied. Yankees four and the White Sox four. Hey, give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. A Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Oh, kind of light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. He's been called the most complete player in baseball. Six feet, six inches tall, 220 pounds, with an arm like a rifle. Dave Winfield, named to the All-Star team for eight consecutive years, winner of three straight gold gloves, and last year batted 340. 1984 was Dave Winfield's finest season as a Yankee, and 1985 looks even better. Yankee baseball, catch it on Channel 11. Participating advertisers in New York Yankee baseball are Toyota, who reminds you to buckle up and use child safety seats. It's a good feeling. Bud Light, the less filling light beer with the first name and taste. Citibank, when you bank at Citibank, it's your city. Your tri-state Dodge dealers who invite you to test drive poetry in motion. The 1985 Dodge Lancer and by the New York Yankees. Well, we got some changes for the White Sox. We've got some changes for the White Sox as we go now to the bottom of the eighth inning. Dan Spilner is on to pitch his third appearance of the season. Pitched inning against Milwaukee, two-thirds against the Red Sox. Tom Pachorek, who pinched yet, remains in the lineup in left field. Pachorek replacing uh, Rudy Law. And the new shortstop is Scott Fletcher, who batted for the shortstop Gian in the top half of the inning. So three changes for the White Sox, their fourth pitcher of the ball game, and Willie Randolph to face Spilner. And he takes strike one call. Willie's two for four in the ball game, couple of singles, popped the second and reached on an error. Shortens up the bunt and takes the ball, one and one. Roger Maris has uh, joined us, Spencer. Everybody's shaking hands with Roger. Looks real good. I just happened to mention one of our sponsors, Bud Light, and I know you've got a warm spot in your heart for oh, Anheuser-Busch. Oh, I sure do. Uh, we have the greatest products in the world. <laughs> and a great man representing him. Yeah, Roger, Roger has Maris. got... What, he got the whole state of Florida? I wish I did. No. Well, you, uh, you can't have all the money in the world. Hey, what I've got is fine. Oh, okay, that's... Glad to hear that. Glad to see you looking so well. Roger Maris, the man who hit 61. And here is Randolph hitting one deep to right field. Baines is back in the warning track to put it away. But Willie going with a pitch and hitting one out into an area where a fellow who wore number nine used to hit a few into this ballpark, but a little bit not, further. Not huh? only did he... Good area out there, too. <laughs> not only did he hit him, 
but he was a very underrated right fielder. Fine right fielder. Well, Phil has always been very generous with, you know, with my... No, <laughs> no, no, no. No, just hold that, Roger, and we'll talk a little bit here, because, you know, when guys are noted for their hitting, they kind of overlook the fielding. Here's Meacham trying to bunt for a base hit, but he pops it right to the first baseman, Walker, for the second out of the inning. Roger, I was telling Phil earlier, and uh, at the risk of embarrassing you last night at the dinner, uh, I've been a fan of this game for a long time, and I went over to you, and I got you to sign one of those sheets of that great cartoon that Bill Gallo drew. Because I, because I get, wanted to have your autograph. Come up just a little bit oh. so they can see that true Roger Harris. <laughs> Thank you, Spencer. Of course, it, uh, you know, it was very nice and very flattering. No, but it must have been great. You and the Mick back again. Will you ever forget? I know you'll never forget 1961. Not only for your 61 home runs, but the great battle you and Mickey had going right down to the last week of the season for the home run crown. No, I'll, I'll never forget it. And of course, you know, it was great that uh, two of us were going for it like that because that, you know, I think pushed both of us to strive harder and uh, I think just kept us going. And, you know, it was a real pleasure. The count to Mattingly goes to one and one. Speaking of rivalries, it was a pretty good one in this ball club last year between this fella and Dave Winfield. Boy, they sure had a close race, didn't they? Oh, yes, sir. Here is Pachorek making the catch to retire the side. So the Yankees go quietly in the bottom of the eighth inning. Nothing across. We've gone eight full innings here at the stadium. Opening day, 1985. White Sox and Yankees tied at four. Well, while Rags is warming up, we got a chance to uh, talk with Roger again. Roger, you know, you were never noted for a home run hitter but that year, everything you hit, even the line drives, were carrying into the seats. Well, Phil, uh, I don't, you know, I've always hit uh, a fairly decent amount of home runs. Yeah. You know, in those days, really, I think if you were uh, hitting over 20, you were probably considered a home run hitter. And, uh, you know, I hit uh, 28 with Kansas City in 50, uh, what, 58 and 59. Uh, I don't remember what I did there. I went out with the Phoenix operation and... Uh, and then, of course, 60, 61, and on. And in minor leagues, I had some good home run years. But, uh, you know, I guess it was just uh, all coming together, at, you know, in oh, the 60s, know late it. 50s. And it was beautiful to watch, I tell you. In the last day of the season. Well, the, the, the home runs I hit, uh, you know, I was most of my home runs were the line drive yeah. type. They weren't uh, like Mandel. Know, they weren't like Mickey's. <laughs> Mickey, when he put the crunch to it, you know, he really got the crunch. As a matter of fact, we were talking to somebody down the dugout uh, just prior to the game, and uh, he was looking at that building out in center field there, and he was saying, see that left uh, three windows from the right in the upper part there? And the guy said, yeah. He said, well, I hit one in, in there. You know? Same I old Mickey. Him, I said, okay, Mick. <laughs> he came close a couple of times. Count to Walker is 0-2. Rigetti's pitch is outside. Ball one. We're in the ninth inning. We're tied at 4-4. Four and four. Raj, one final thing. There was a talk about the rivalry. There was a talk about the battle. I think there's got to be a rivalry. Two guys were fighting the lead of league in home runs, but it was a rivalry that was based on respect, not anger or anything negative. Most definitely it was because, you know, Mickey, I admired Mickey so much even before I got here as being such a great ball player. Then it was such a great honor to be playing beside him in the outfield and then to be fortunate enough to be in a rivalry with him hitting the home runs. Uh, you know, I was elated myself, let alone uh, us keep, keep this thing going to where, well, the year before he beat me by one and, uh, you know, uh, we had a close race all that year and I, I really didn't want it to happen again, but if it would have happened, I couldn't have done anything about it because you're just doing the best you can do. Roger, thanks for those great memories of some of the greatest years in New York Yankee history. Well, Phil, thank, thanks, Spencer. Phil, you were part of it. It was just uh, a, a great time. Walker strikes out, so there's one man away here in the ninth inning, and here's Carlton Fisk. We're tied at four and four. The Yankees and the White Sox. Fisk, one for four. His single coming in the fifth inning. In the dirt, ball one. I just want to ask Roger one other thing. You know, a lot of people figure, well, he hit 61 home runs. It must have been the greatest time of his life. But you had an awful lot of pressure. I remember those last weeks with those reporters following you around. You could have been a basket case. Well, I think, uh, Phil, if that season would have gone much longer, I could have been in serious trouble because 
it really was getting to me. Uh, and by the time the World Series was over with in Cincinnati, uh, when we had that finish that fifth game, I knew myself I was in trouble if that season went, you know, if we had a few more ball games to go. And it was tough, but uh, yet it was enjoyable. It, made, it really made me. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm happy. Oh, I know you. Yeah. I'm glad you are, too. Roger I'll never forget broadcasting oh. that 61st home run. Oh, what a thrill. Lost my voice. Here is Fisk, center field. Meacham out in the grass makes the play for the second out of the ninth inning. How about that play Meacham made earlier to save the ball game? I couldn't believe he'd ever catch up to it. Incredible play. Just go back in the ball game. That play came uh, in the fourth inning. The White Sox had two runners on. There were two men out, and Rudy Law popped on the left field. And here you see Meacham going out to make this easy one, but the one he made on that particular play was not an easy one. It took well, one run and perhaps two away from the White Sox. Here's Ron Kittle, the designated hitter, and he lashes one deep to left field. Griffey back at the wall, leaps. He got the ball! He got the ball! going up against the wall to get more height on his jump so the side is retired on Griffey's incredible defensive play nothing across for the White Sox we go to the bottom of the ninth we are tied at four and four Bottom of the ninth inning, we're tied at four and four, and Dave Winfield will lead it off for the Yankees against Dan Spillner, the right-hander. Winfield's two-run home run tied this ball game up in the seventh inning. Takes up high, ball one. Winfield two for three, walk, single to right, pop to the catcher, and then a two-run home run coming off Gene Nelson in the seventh inning. Tied this game up at four and four. Outside, ball two. Going to get another look at Griffey's catch. Roger Maris almost fell out of his seat. I almost fell out of the booth. This is unbelievable. Look at the glove about two feet over the fence. Definite home run he took away from him. Watch another him, view. Watch him put the foot up against the wall. He actually yeah. used that as leverage to get up higher. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Inside, ball three. By the way, uh, Spencer, Roger Maris says this young Yankee fan Jennifer Corson at St. Mary's School in New Jersey wants to say hello to her as do all the Yankees. Okay Rod. Hi Jen. 3 and 0 oh pitch. That's the fastball in for a strike 3 and 1. Four runs 11 hits one error for the White Sox 4 9 and 3 for the Yankees. Spillner, the fourth pitcher of the day for Tony LaRusso's White Sox. And here's a 3-1 pitch to Winfield. Outside corner, strike two. Winfield set to drop the bat and take off for first base. And see that curve. Pretty good pitch. Good pitch. Not too bad. Robert Merrill's going to be a basket case. He was going to argue with the umpire on that one. <laughs> Here's the 3-2 coming now to David Winfield. Oh. Strike three call. Curved him with a through the curve. Fooled Winfield a bit. And there's one man out here in the ninth inning. bring up Don Baylor and as uh, always seems to happen man makes a great catch he's got to come to bat the following inning it'll be grippy yeah that should rock the stadium a little bit unless Baylor hits one out now <laughs> and Griffey will have to wait till Thursday <laughs> gladly Bye. 
Greinke hits a home run. Hey, Don Baylor, this buzz for you. Here it is again. It looks like it's going to go foul. It is right down the line. Pachorek chases. He has no chance. It will bang off the foul pole for a home run, and the Yankees win the ball game by a score of five to four. So here in the ninth inning, it is Don Baylor with a home run to win it for the Yankees off Dan Spilner in a ball game that saw the Yankees come from behind. Baylor comes out of the dugout for a tip of the hat and the Yankees with four runs 11 hits one error check it five runs 10 hits three errors and the White Sox four runs 11 hits one error the White Sox got on the board first in this ball game in the first inning an error by Randolph setting it up Harold Baines singled home Ozzie Guillen who moved to second on a sacrifice Yankees came back with two of their own in the bottom of the second on Butch Weiniger's home run Chicago tied it in the third on a home run by Harold Baines and it remained two all until the seventh inning a big seventh inning starting for the Chicago White Sox in which uh, Rudy Law reached on an error then Greg Walker's two run home run into the upper deck and right field put the White Sox out in front by a score of four to two but in the bottom of the seventh after Matty doubled. Lawler was replaced by Gene Nelson, who was greeted by Dave Winfield's two-run home run to right. Ball game was tied at four and four. Into the ninth inning it went. And uh, for the Yankees, it was Dave Rigetti on the mound, picking up the victory in relief. And in the ninth inning, Rod Kittle sent Ken Griffey back to the wall in left field. Griffey leaped up, took a home run away from Kittle. The ball game was still tied, and in the bottom of the ninth inning, with one man out, Don Baylor, with his first home run of the season, smacks one left field off the foul pole, and the New York Yankees have won their third in a row as they win the opener here at the stadium. Five runs, ten hits, three errors for the White Sox. Four runs, 11 hits, one error. Rigetti wins it in relief. Dan Spilner takes the loss. A crowd of 53,019 on hand here at the stadium, and that does it. The final score once again, the Yankees five and the Chicago White Sox four. For Phil Rizzuto and Bill White, this is Spencer Ross saying so long from Yankee Stadium. Remember to tune in on Friday at 8 p.m. when the Yankees take on the Cleveland Indians right here along the Yankee Baseball Network.